as a dick because he's a dick. Welcome to the Sneaker Files podcast. I'm your host, Eugene. What? He's doing the accent a goo all the time. I, I, I want to. I want to bring it almost bigger like and bigger every episode like from now question. on. And by the <laughs> end like, of the year, I'll be. I'll, I'll be so. I'll be like, Mariah it's Carey. Like you're questioning yourself, <laughs> oh, Mariah Carey. All right. <laughs> you can uh, find us online at www.sneakerfiles. That's sneaker p h i l e s dot com. You can find us on Twitter at sneaker files and on instagram at sneaker files underscore podcast uh, once again we are recording live from stay fresh canada's premier sneaker consignment store um, you can find them at www.stayingfresh.ca um, once again i'd like to remind everybody you can uh, find us on itunes on google play on our website as i said before uh, sneakerfiles.com and you can watch this thing on youtube just search sneaker files podcast there's uh, other goodies and gems in there as well not just this podcast and of course every thursday at 8 30 p.m eastern you can catch me and um, brooke brookie do on her brand new show sneaker files live where uh, it's like a sneaker talk show that's live and uh, we interact with you know the viewers of the thing I like it and uh first of all to my right uh it's it's not joe it's oh not damn joe. it it's so Jason. weird yeah it's so weird hey? usually uh, second i can't even fiddle see tonight you. second fiddle <laughs> <laughs> you moved up on the depth charts yeah i, I, I just <laughs> replace one white guy with another bald white guy whatever wow. You gotta that, take that works. You I gotta guess. take it for two. You know, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. I won't have you know the same sort of history. Can you can you play the role of Joe tonight? I could. I don't have any sound effects. I don't have any you know witty rebuttals or anything like that. So my challenge is always to make Joe laugh on this podcast. That's he laughs. Me. He laughs whenever Only I do a top, top three. Top <laughs> three. He's a selective say. laugher. Just during Pierre's top three. Yeah. So any anything. Nala. You- Nala, anyway, sorry. <laughs> dude, I love that Nala clip that so was much. There was yeah. actually, I my buddy Googled it. There's actually a discussion on Reddit. Yeah, if he if no, I understand. Right. That like, you can rabbit Amazing. hole your shit down that thing. <laughs> We're right? getting out there. So yeah. I, I think that's gonna do. I just like Lion King, and I thought Nala was. You dumb. can't just force uh, yeah. it in there, bro. Yeah. If at least I'm doing it straight up, I'm not thinking about it right okay, that's, that's what fair. we're supposed to do right? yeah okay right and stuff happens when you don't think because when you when you don't think about it your subconscious starts going on that's true and that's why the that's buble me. came in like my <laughs> buble dude buble. i have so many people that was like oh, I, it's so cute that you said buble it's adorable I'll it's so that. cute that you yeah. said adorable is Sinc- an appropriate uh, word for that. uh sinclair Right, Sinclair. Yeah. I'll give you every day. But then there's like, like I always talk about Drake. I always talk about Bieber. I always talk about like all these guys, and I never said them in that. So I'm like, what is it? What? It, it's actually a test of your subconscious. Exactly. Exactly. I, I like this game. You guys should do that more. Yeah. So uh, now nah, we just watch you do it. Before we roll <laughs> on, Jason, any updates um, on anything yeah. on shoe anything? related? On Custom shoe related. Oh yeah, I've been working with. Um, you know everyone's favorite uh, Twitter member, uh, KDC, Kicksteals Canada. Shout out! Shout, shout out! out. Um, that, yeah, we've been working on a custom, yeah. and I've been posting, you know, some random photos that really describe nothing. Yeah. Um, well, by the time you guys hear this or <laughs> or watch just, it, yeah. it's already out in in the public. Yeah, and so. it'll be out there. It'll be out there this weekend. So yeah, after you hear about this, it'll exactly. be revealed. So, so the yeah, reveal is this weekend. Saturday. Saturday will be his reveal. Cool. And, yeah, I'm how, excited about that. How much input did he give you before you actually started like putting like paint to shoe? Uh, we chatted about um, a couple different things. Like we knew it was going to be a racer, um, which is no big secret now. Um, but you know, we threw around a bunch of different designs. Yeah, just stuff that I wanted to try, stuff that he was interested in. Um, obviously, trying to go with something that doesn't already exist. Yeah, I didn't want to just rehash something. And yeah. Um, and we decided to go with just something very simple straight out of the gate just to, you know, uh, appease kind of his thoughts and, and do something simple for me mm-hmm. time wise. No T-Rex um, skin or anything. Eh? No. And what I a think, shame. I, yeah. What a shame. Um, I think later on we'll probably approach, yeah. you know, doing something, um, 
you know, a bit more interesting and a bit more elaborate. Elaborate. I'm sure no matter so. what, like, he, I know he has a lot of tri- uh, Flynet racers in his arsenal. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. I'm sure that once everything is all said and done, this is probably going to be one of his top fives. Maybe. Let's hope I so. hope so. Yeah. He was, he, you guys are going to order again. Uh... He messaged me the other day and he was like, I'm so stoked with these. He was just really, and it was nice. good to hear that yeah. kind of reaction. Feedback, like, right? for Direct me, feedback. I just was like, I just, Every time I complete something, I think people are gonna hate it. Yeah, oh. and that's just a, a an an artist thing in your right. mind. Like, yeah. you doubt everything that you do, and you didn't and get. So I just figured, oh, it's just gonna be a huge flop. And then he's just like, <laughs> what super gets excited you, about it? So what gets cool. you going? Is it the, in the moment? I'll, I'll finish something and I'll be like, this was great. Like, right. I really love this. Yeah. And then as soon as I go to put it out to the world, yeah. right. that's when I'm like, oh, this is wrong. I could have changed this. I didn't. You're pretty and hard I mean, on yourself, then, eh? I mean, mm. that's part of have my job here? to do that. No, uh, no, don't so show you it. Seen it. Don't oh, show yeah, it you're gonna reveal. Yeah. He likes reveals. I want to be the, to <laughs> yeah. be the general public. No, but so yeah. my question is that if you're doing customization, like a project, yeah, like I'm sure you do the work around it, um, and that's enjoyable. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But sometimes. then there's also the hype, and then there's sometimes because <laughs> it's hard. Sometimes, sometimes it's, you make mistakes. Yeah. Sometimes it's boring. Sometimes it's yeah. Yeah. But how about the overall joy that you get when someone goes holy effing s that's this probably is... the most satisfying yeah you okay. actually have someone say that i mean there's always going to be people that don't like what you've done yeah and, who and, doesn't like and... what you've done kurtz <laughs> talk to my wife wow um... <laughs> let's talk about let's do the whole podcast on that <laughs> yeah. excellent because there's then, people that don't well just stay home then there's when the first uh, time that we met you you yeah. brought a whole bunch of customs yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. And then you know, we, I showed pictures to my friends, and that Tiffany Air Max that you did. Yeah. Yeah. Like people don't know that there's an Air Max, like a Tiffany colorway, but when they saw the colors of that, they were like, "Man, this looks like Tiffany." Like you captured oh, it that way. That's like, cool. Yeah. Yeah. And, and and most times when I want to do a custom, it's usually because I'm experimenting with something uh-huh. that I I want to know whether I can actually do it or not do yeah. it. Yeah. Um. In that one, it was like actually making the faux croc skin on it. You know, burned it all into the whole shoe. Yeah. I wanted to see if I can actually do it and if it would look good. Damn. So, a lot of times it's experimentation, and um, I've been like lucky enough that it hasn't gone sideways. Yeah. So, otherwise, you just kind of throw the Unless shoe out and start sock. over. And stuff. Yeah, <laughs> I'll get there. I'll get there. That's the next. I, I've, got, I've got like four or five projects where I'm like, uh, I yeah. can't finish those. Well, that's good. And you're, so and that's and you're trying to make more time more than ever now to yeah. do yeah. some of your artistic endeavors. Yeah. Well, now good that the you. space is there and it's, you know, a little bit easier. Big to things then, right? Some. I'm expecting big so. things. Yeah. I hope so. I'm expecting, um, uh, you know, a Sneaker Files uh, exclusive oh. sneaker. Well, we'll, well, we have to just go through the whole process. I know, sitting down I, it, the, it's books. funny because i i envision it i was thinking about not a shoe but other things um wow um like other products not other oh. things other products um that could you know and i just envision it none of them looking the same like because you all have we all have different interests and we've express those right. through mine is just a sealed it? box you can't even open it <laughs> you won't even know what the custom is because it won't matter because you'll never open it um but like I, I, you know, I know that the UNC colorway is like something of yours, and you know anything that's OG would be, you know, yeah, um, okay. Joe, and anything hype beastie would be yours. Um, what? Why do I get that title? No, he's, Pierre has to he's share like, that title. Yeah, yeah no, but other things, you're, like, uh, I'm a little bit hype beast. You're OG. Like, he would be he like uh, OG, but also Bape related. You know, yeah. anything that yeah, has yeah, Bape. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. You know, so I'm the Q. Yeah, I like both sides. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> oh, I'm like, I'm like, what's the cue? Yeah. I experiment with it. I get it. I get it. I get it now. I get it. So, you know, so it's crossed my mind about like, would that be a jumping off point for designing yeah. something? Right. Would it be a common shoe with four different ways yeah. or wh- whatever? Like, anyway, we can chat about this. Okay, can I have Actually, stuff, uh, so. can I just ask Kurt sure, one thing? Yeah, sure. This is a quick game because Pierre gets his own game. <laughs> yeah. If you yeah. have to uh, find or use one shoe to define us, who would Pierre and mine be? What would Pierre and mine be? If it was one shoe, that just one shoe, one silhouette or colorway or whatever. I think it, from what I know, it's not like, no. Okay, huh? before you start, it's not because like me or him likes the shoe the most, but what represents? Oh, us like the most. what mm. would describe yeah. your personalities yeah. the most? Yeah. Oh shit, that's tough. That's a tough one, but that is tough. I knew what shoe that both of you liked that would be. Yeah, the... I tried to make it tougher for you. <laughs> you knew I was gonna answer that. Exactly. You fucking changed it. Would you consider um, me as a Yeezy though? No. Okay, it's thank you. All no. right. Uh, but okay, I'll answer it first here. with the way that you said it, and then I'll answer it after. Okay. So the first one would have been the Concord 11. Yeah, that would be my uh, would favorite be, shoe. Yes, would be, would be yeah. 
we've something shared that. shared, yeah. you know, or at least a Jordan 11. Um, based on you guys, I, I think it would have to fall somewhere in between uh, not completely OG no. and something that... That's a tough you, one, a, though, a yeah. Newer, yeah. Like a newer uh, silhouette or something that, because you're newer to the game, I guess, mm-hmm. if you will. Um, that's tough. Don't worry, we'll we'll we'll, give, we'll come back. Maybe I'll answer it. it by the end of the show. Yeah, yeah. Let's yeah. do that. I'll, I gotta think of <laughs> right away. You just yell out. Right and uh, before we move it. on to our next panelist, I know he took so much. Kelly time. Clarkson. Oh, yeah, we kept asking so him so much time, and we never introduced Pierre. But no, okay. we'll get to it. Right, but no, no, no. Hold on. Oh. Before we move on, uh, Kurtz, I know Yo. that uh, I have a habitual Uh-oh. fucking tendency to cut you off mid thought. Okay, that happens. Yeah. And uh, it's if, known it, to happen. It's not because I don't like you or your thoughts or your or, <laughs> or your opinions. Are it's you just, gonna forget or something? Yes, I have a bad memory. So okay. I, before you start uh, continuing Boba. on, I just want to you know f- get my thought out there and be like, hey, what do you guys think? Mm-hmm. I, that's my like in rule yeah, in this thing. Enough. So uh, because I do that, I do want to apologize. And to make it up t- this week, <laughs> uh, we have switched the bully bell. <laughs> into the Eugene cutting off Kurt's belt. Oh, nice. So every like time it. you feel that you have unjustly been cut off, <laughs> you're like you're allowed to ring the bell. So there's people, actually, listeners, there's sneakerphiliacs yeah. out there need, having I, drinking I need, like, games. A, a table, like, right here. On how many so times? So every like, bam, we have listeners that actually yes. do drinking games. So every time Eugene cuts Jason off, nice. he takes okay. a shot or a swig or something. Maybe yeah. I'll kick the table or something. I'll figure it out. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, okay. That's the, I appreciate that. That's there you awesome. go. Yeah. So uh, I know it's not intentional. With the audio cue, I'll figure out exactly how often I'm doing this. Okay. I'll, uh, and I'll try. It's to like really a shut up. <laughs> 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 Moving on. Uh, what's try up? Not. To uh, Jason's right, we got. This is Pierre, guys. What's going on? What's going on, Pierre? They can't answer you back, by the way. Of course, they're it yelling looks, at their fucking ear ear pods right now. He looks like right he now. wants a response, though. That's what he's it is. looking right at the camera when I he know, says it. So he's very sincere about it. No, he's sweet. You had your time. Let me, let me have yeah, mine. You, we've been on you for 11 minutes, <laughs> Can months, I get a second friend. bell for this twit? <laughs> oh, no. you, you get a cowbell for him, yeah. and you get the service bell for me. I only me. T- take two service minutes. Bell. Don't worry. Nothing's happening. No, no, no. You, it's, your, it's your time. We have lots of time because well, Eugene, one less everything's person been to good. Yeah, some, Everything's been good, Eugene. Someone had a flat tire today. Jeez, <laughs> couldn't make it. <laughs> you probably Googled, Googled flat tire with nail on it, right? Yeah, that's the picture that came up. <laughs> well, that's his captcha, let me tell you a story. Picture. <laughs> like three weeks ago i had a flat tire and my tires are from the original tires in my car so like mm. they got 150 clicks on it, 150 thousand clicks on it that's so pretty like, good if they still have original tires on your they were not in the best of shape okay and i did get a no blowout not just a fucking puncture but a blowout oh yeah so like i came to I, I went to my car and it was just completely flat and at this point like each tire was going already so i had some practice changing a tire mm. and i changed a tire a spare with no special jack or anything just the fucking shit that's in my trunk okay the included one you know oh yeah, yeah, yeah. the, the so default like, the default yeah. stuff right. your podcast yeah. equipment <laughs> yeah. so, so like like, jacking up with the mic quite booms the, quite the MacGyver so move. i was able to change a tire from start to finish in around nine or ten minutes that's so pretty I, good. So I would have waited nine or ten minutes for Joe to show up Fucking a little bit later. Send you That's to, all I'm saying. Just send you he to could, Daytona. He does have a spare tire probably in Who that car. Who doesn't have a spare tire? He has a spare Ooh, tire. I never even thought about that. So, He's like, uh, uh, I got to get up at yeah. five or whatever. Is there anything? Is there's no excuses. Oilers game going on. No, there's Not no at the excuse. moment. It's, no. There's no sporting events. Not that I know of. It's Thursday in Vancouver, so there's nothing really going on. <laughs> Not that I know of. Yeah. He probably started drinking or something. Yeah. yeah. Just like, whatever it is, Um, you know. We miss him. Right? Yeah, we It's not the same without Joe, but at the same time, the show must go on. That's right. Definitely. But it's Pierre's time right now. What do, you got, what do you got to say for yourself? Nothing. Wow. <laughs> Absolutely any, nothing. Any updates with like Sneaker World or where uh, were you today? I was actually, I forgot the store, but I wanted to check out the OVO pop up. Um, but we'll talk about that later. I didn't want to sure. put it on blast. Like, I know that it didn't no last as long. It didn't last as long as what they said or advertised but then again that was van city buzz so i don't really know okay that's fine um the the, the well, information that they get yeah there, we'll so. explore all the fucking yeah things yeah about. so um you got anything else to add before we move on uh, no no i mean uh, like the sneaker community is all well and and going really hard in vancouver i think Have it's... we picked up anything no okay no nope. but we Fair will enough. soon we will soon i took a, <laughs> a promise at livestock. <laughs> i know i, I will take i took a uh, a little visit to livestock and they were they had some real cool heat 
still. Yeah. Mm. And every a lot of things are going on sale right now. Like yeah. really good sales. Yeah. So uh, uh it, n- non-sneak. Well, it's sneaker related. Uh last week I picked up that private label. Yeah, that's uh, awesome. Sneaker backpack or duffel bag? Got yeah. it already? Nope. Yeah. yeah. It's awesome. I really I saw like it. And... So shout out to private label. Yeah. Um how many shoes can you fit in there? Four. Four without the box, right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, four without the box. And I mean, it depends on what kind of shoe, if it's low cut or, you know, high top or whatever. Where would you like take you could, that then? Like business or? Uh, it's uh, TSA approved, so you could take it on carry on. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I got to give it a go and see how nice. it works, but yeah. it's got All like right. the Now you got to travel. The, uh, it has a, <laughs> it has a, a, a laptop case in it and some other pockets. And anyway, um, well done. yes, I can take it on vacation or whatever it is yeah. that he said. You so. got to go, you got to go on vacation first. That's true. To work oh, too hard. True. Trying to make your millions. Ugh, <laughs> You're hard. almost there. Took up Charlie over here. For him to be a millionaire, he has to lose a billion. He bought a house. That means he's a millionaire. That's that's true in this city. Yeah, mm. very true. Uh, I caught one pair of shoes. It's something that I was looking forward to. What'd you get? Uh, trainers. Nice. Uh, yeah, I was yes, finally fine. able to nice get a pair of some yay nits. We can say yay nits as much as we want. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's what he gets. You should show up here to regulate the rules, Joe. Yeah, Joe. But yeah. Fuck. Without here, it's a wild, wild west. I know. Not gonna lie. Can't reach the bell. <laughs> Bully so yeah i got one pair and you got an assist though right yeah man you gonna one shout of the, out your boy or I, I, i've no. never met him before it's just oh. a one-time thing and of course i'm gonna be like hey here's my number that's no, no, no. keep in touch so yeah, anyone that's my size of course i'm gonna keep their contact yeah and, uh, he hooked me up for like minimal minimal resale like it's not even worth the Happy gas meal. it took him to get price here. of a coffee depends on where you go really wow, well, you speaking go. of coffee uh oh. Okay. Let's play a game. All right. So yeah. at the beginning ish of every episode, uh, we like to play a game. Oh, um, I thought it was. You know, this. Okay. Every week, uh, we like to play a game with uh, my man P over here. What up? Uh, a lot of us are a little bit rusty in the head since we uh, only record once a week and uh, we don't really pre discuss the, the the show or anything like that. So Pierre's top three. Nice. I tried to fill in for Joe. That was I, dope. I tried. I like that one. So uh, we're it's gonna okay. play a game called Pierre's Top Three. Basically, uh, we're gonna name one category, and Pierre has to name the his top three of the choice uh, without even thinking Lightning about it. Lightning round. Okay? But this is an easy one. Okay? Let's do it. Let's do it. Uh, are you a coffee drinker at all? Mm, lifestyle coffee. Okay, here we go. Answer. Perfect. <laughs> wait, wait a second. I, I, I understand what, he, what he's saying. Thank you. Yeah. What? I'm a oh, life- he drinks everything but coffee at the Starbucks. Okay. Wait a minute. Wait, no, I, I do it because it's cool. Life. Okay. Lifestyle. That's perfect for this category. Well, that's what it is. What do you drink? Fucking hype beast coffee? <laughs> no. It's lifestyle. What? It's, what li- it's lifestyle. It's got boost in it. What is lifestyle coffee? Starbucks is a lifestyle coffee. It is? No is one that goes what the to kids are calling no. it? Am I getting that old no, that it's no, called fucking no. lifestyle like, coffee? Other people so okay, so there's people that use it for functionality and there's people yeah. that drink it because they want to be cool. I understand. And I'm that one. I, I totally you don't get drink it. it for because it gives you a bit of a jolt. You just drink it because it's well, look at me. It's that's not the primary is. effect. Why don't you just get a cup and put whatever the fuck you want in it then. And it because it's not doesn't have the Starbucks coffee I'm cool logo. Well, so no, I see. He knows what's up. Come, All right. Anyway, I, I, I know exactly w- here. what you mean because <laughs> that's I, why I'm paying three fifty instead of a dollar. Exactly. I get it. Off. Trust me, I get it. All right. All right. So, Pierre, yep. your top three category is top three caffeinated drink. Jolt, Red Bull, Coke. Wow. Coca Cola. I was going coffee route, and then you went in a whole different just, spectrum. <laughs> No coffee beverage Yeah, but they just say coffee in it. it would just be... Yeah. Jolt, remember Jolt, though? I do yeah. Jolt was dope, yeah. Highly Until caffeinated. Until it was really bad for you. <laughs> I don't think Red Bull's the best for you either. No. Oh, yeah. Neither are cola drinks. You do Red Bull vodkas? When uh, you... Up and down. That's all that is. I've had it before. What's up and down mean? You got the upper and the downer in it. You oh. got the booze that makes you like all settle down. And then yeah. You Red Bull. Like, like, I, I don't drink much, but, you know. Whatever that takes out the taste of alcohol, I see, I'll try it. I want to see you <laughs> wasted, like takes chocolate out. wasted. I don't get wasted, though. Alcohol's I want to see nice, you. The chances are, uh, if I start drinking, you'll see me drinking, drinking, and then buzzed, stop. and then passed out. There's nothing in between. Oh, really? Sneaker files does not condone the use of alcohol, no. drugs, I, I don't, or other materials. <laughs> I'm actually a pretty composed <laughs> drinker. Yeah? Like, I've had, I don't know how. Can you? In the real world spectrum, I don't know if this is impressive or not, but I can have, like, a six-pack and, like, be totally functional oh i thought like, seemingly functional can we can you promise you think you're functional but everyone else i'm the is babysitter like, the of guy? the drunk group oh even God. when i drink so. can you promise um 
for the Sneaker Files Christmas party, uh, a let loose Eugene? I'll let something like loose. A white girl maybe, wasted maybe, Eugene. <laughs> maybe there's a part of your brain that just doesn't have like that alcohol consumption affection thing. I, I don't think that's it. It's just I, I have no idea. My mm. wife was listening to a podcast where a lady in a part of her brain it, it crystallized mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. it um, she lost the sense of fear. Oh man! Any sense of the word of fear, like zero fear of anything. When she's been like stabbed twice, she's been so like walking into you know an area where there's like a bunch of people that look shady. It's just like zero fear. Was that the radio lab? uh, I forget what the I have to ask ask her. But isn't that the same thing as like like, walking out into a street? You just have no fear that oh I might get hit by a car or something like that. Like just don't think about those things. Is that where like you know when when you want to approach a girl at a club? You you have zero a couple fear. of drinks, zero fear, right? Nothing. So, yeah, you wouldn't even think of, you wouldn't think twice about but it. But that that's what alcohol your inhibition does. Yeah. Are just, yeah. It gets yeah. lower, right? Yeah. yeah, it doesn't take it away though. Yeah, but you you describe kind of like a more scientific. I was like just yeah, like it's just like that's how it is. She just yeah, and that's fucked up. Red Bull that yeah. will do that. Yeah, that one day I'll that. I'll know what alcohol tastes like. Yeah, and then one what day. was the third one that I said? Coca Cola. Yeah, yeah man. Coca Cola. Coca Cola. I was, I was going more for like fucking you know Starbucks drinks, but mm. no, you that didn't. Tr- that one was easy. You tr- you have to try to get me with like 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 the Nova thing. <laughs> Disney character. That was all you, buddy. I was one thirds. I my buddy was like, you shouldn't have said that, and I was like, I won't. I'm There's like, no wrong answer. Here's the beauty of this game. There's no wrong answer. Yeah, it no, takes my subconscious somehow. I love exactly. It's a test. I have a feeling that it's more of a test. Than maybe I was just gotta, mad you that pick like subjects that you don't think he knows anything about. Well, there's nothing that Pierre doesn't know. Come on. Ooh, there's a lot of stuff that I don't know, but thank you for that. We'll, we'll explore further on that. Yes, in there's the lots weeks. more of that coming up, right? So uh, let's get into sneakers. Anything about the sneaker news or releases that you guys are interested in at the moment? Can we chat about that Saucony drop that happened last week? You have to educate me on this. I don't know a lot about it, but apparently Saucony released a whole, rare, very limited, 100 mm-hmm. of 10... YouTube influencers? Yep. Oh, yeah. Oh, um, that drop you're talking yeah. about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I saw Actually, it. a listener pointed out, uh, shout out to Will Chaltis, because he actually got a pair. Was it 100 in each one? 100 on each one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I saw a bunch of them. I just haven't, haven't had a chance to really kind of sit down and like. There's two through. phases. The yeah. first phase just released yeah. last week. I don't know what the second one is, but they're apps. Everyone that I see, like everything that I that on Twitter, everyone says that it's awesome. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, and it everyone's was, uh, entitled to design. I, yeah, I'm curious if it was um, for like the price point. Yeah, the price point, and it's like how much it, did they have uh, inclusive like design? You know, with yeah. what shoe did they get to pick, or was it all across the same model and it, silhouette and stuff? Or? I think it was all across the same model mm-hmm. and silhouette, but just different colorways. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. That'd be fun to yeah get in on the process. And, Imagine sneaker you know, files uh, with our own one day, my friend, right? Sock, sock anywhere. That's yeah. when we know that we actually made it. I think when sneaker collabs happen. Yeah, yeah. We got this guy that can just make it. We could just fucking make our own. Yeah. So we're doing fake. But maybe, then. but it'd be nice. Then. <laughs> <laughs> Fine line. Yeah. Fine line. Uh, I don't know. Like, it is what it is. Here, here. But there was another Saucony drop that happened just like the week before that. That was the VHS. Oh, I didn't know about that no. one. There was, uh, yeah, it was a uh, VHS um, inspired. So the whole box. Look like an what's a VHS? Old, yeah, so for the younger viewers, it was a, a <laughs> magnetic an, tape. I thought it was like a video. store. I thought it was like a store collab. Like right. I was like yeah. VHS. I've never heard of that before. No. <laughs> what the fuck does that even video? What does it stand for? I have no idea. Nobody There's, even knows. Really. Nobody. It's the myth. VCR before that, after that, right? Yeah. Or, which one is? Well, it's a it, it's a VHS tape, but it was on a VHS VCR. is a format. VCR is video the machine. Cassette oh, okay, recording. okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what that's, everyone thinks. I could yeah. be wrong. Hey, what does DVD stand for? Digital video, video something disc. direct disc. disc. It's actually everyone thinks it's digital video, but it's no, actually recording? digital. Well, there's no S or uh, there's no R in DVD. Oh yeah, oh yeah. yeah. D- DVD actually DVD stands DVR. for digital versatile disc. Oh, why is it versatile? Because it's versatile. You can put audio on it. You can put video on it. You can put just um, memory on it. Oh, or you can put oh, data then, on it. Yeah. Little drops of jewels over there. Yeah, <laughs> I learned that dropper. from a yeah. game show. I think. There you go. What game show? Uh, are you smarter than a tenth? Fifth oh, grader? really? I don't know. A tenth, like... fifth year, <laughs> seventh grader, <laughs> whatever seventh grader. grader. Yeah. Anyways, uh, you were talking about the VHS pack. Oh yeah, just that it, uh, and then it came in a box that looked like a VCR. 
What right. colorway? Black, I'm guessing? All black with silver, and then on the heel tab, White? like on the heel, it had um, the, um, what do they call it, the barcode, not barcode, um, color bars. Mm -hmm. yeah. When you, you know. When oh, the, the test yeah, pattern. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Test pattern, and yeah. then on the bottom is a, uh, it's kind of like the fuzzy noise pattern when your TV gets all fucked up, reception. Oh, that's cool. So that was in the translucent sole. Yeah. Okay. You could see through it. I'm gonna have to check so, it out. See, that's cool. doing a theme properly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's cool. Yeah, very, very. And then it would be VHS, but then the S led into the Saucony. Yeah, mm. so that was kind of cool. See, what's what's hard yeah. about theme shoes is that it's got to capture that like your a demographics because right. some people don't like like don't relate to that. Some people don't know what VHS is. Yeah, like the Power Loader loader pack or whatever, <laughs> yeah. the Aliens pack. Yeah, that one was cool. Who doesn't yeah, know cool. Aliens? Though? Yeah, I know. I know. Do you think like there's youngins out there? I'm talking about like high school age that don't know, haven't seen Alien or Aliens. Well, they probably w I would hope they would have if the Aliens Covenant came out. Plus, recently. dude, they've been they have a because I don't think you can see Aliens that in Ten its, if you yeah. really count it out, right? Like yeah. versus Predator doesn't count. First of all, yeah, it Prometheus. Doesn't. It, it's really not count. in this. It, it's not canon. I will argue. Because it's still alien. It's still alien. It's not canon. I know, but it's. It'll be part like saying, "Hey, Lego Star Wars must be part of the fucking Star Wars canon." <laughs> That's <But> a good. <laughs> <laughs> I get that, but just I just think that it's still part of. It's not part of the genre, but it's still part of the. The names in it, I understand, I know, I know, but. Yeah. Okay. I, I'm not gonna fight that battle. I'm probably gonna lose. <laughs> but that I, I'm just asking, like. Uh, a certain demographic we're talking about like the young people nowadays not us anymore this spends loads of money without even thinking mm -hmm. like that is who people market towards nowadays anyone that needs to make money mm -hmm. and when you have a classic retro or a throwback theme do these young people relate to that shit yeah. or at least even know what it is for them to be like I need to get that VHS pack I need yeah. to get the fucking aliens pack I think the VHS has a better Right opportunity for selling than yeah. the alien. Put it in a boombox and it'll sell. Because of one, though these kids don't no, know VHSs. But, but just on the design alone, it might be interesting enough for people who already like Saucony. Yeah, to to cop it. That's but true. anyone to buy the Alien Stomper, it's it's a pretty unique looking shoe, and I don't think anyone's <laughs> really gonna yeah. wear it anywhere. Never seen so never. unless you're buying it because you know the movie and you grew up that yeah. you would add it to your collection for that What's reason. That? I don't think people are, and I don't think it's gonna, you know, for the people that you're talking about, that pack is not gonna have a huge resale market value to it. So why would someone the first the first one, it? the OG ones, like were they should have stopped at that. That's different because the OG one yeah. was the ones that Ellen Ripley yeah. wore. Yeah. That was a huge deal for me, they're anyways. Just, yeah. they're just, and now it's themes. Yeah. Now they're just squeezing yeah. whatever they can. A yellow yeah. one, where like a like a. It'd be like if they released the, a, a Nike Mag, but yeah. instead of like the Nike Mag, they yeah. have like a DeLorean colorway on it. You know. Is, speaking of themes, did they ever do like a Matrix pack or like a Matrix theme? Not from, that I know of. Yeah, no. that would be. I would instantly give me give them my money. No. Uh, Depends on how the execution, How's my execu friend. Okay, I get the, it. I, the that's Jordan true. The Jordan 5 Premium is a Matrix inspired. <laughs> it's all leather, black leather. Nope, does everything. it come with Mr. Smith glasses? Because I don't know. I can get, buy a pair and sell them I to used you. To get, I used to get got Mr. all the Anderson. time with theme stuff. Like, yeah. like instead of buying like a regular video game, I'll do like a the deluxe pack. Yeah. All, that's, I, that's me to a T. Nice. Man. Love, love, love. What if, what if you, when they sold you the pack... You had to pick the red pill or the blue pill, and you got a different. Oh, shit, I just got goosebumps too on that one. You didn't kind of like what they did. Yeah, with the, it's like buying what... bear bricks. You don't know what's inside. <laughs> yeah. No, but they did that with the the Jordan release, right? The, yeah, the baseball ugly baseball one. A lot of people didn't like, that. and you didn't know which one you were gonna get. And maybe there was two versions. You know, well, how would you rate that drop though? Would you, did you like that one or or hmm, the shoe was the for execution me. again? I like you the, said. Are, are you yeah. talking about like the the, the, the way they released it? Just everything in general. No, so separate the release I, from the design. Did okay. you like the design of the shoe? No. Did you like how they the idea of the release uh, concept? The black box. That would deter me from of, buying. Yeah? Yeah. I'm not saying like, what if it's it cool. Was, what if it was too fire? Like you would hands down, you would buy. Either one? Either one. Wouldn't fucking matter. They were both equally like fire. Like it and was a reigning champ and a reigning champ in there, like ultra boost. And it was just like. What am I gonna do? Right? Uh, would you would if, you take the chance? Yeah. See, I think it just comes down to the, the design execution, of it, right? Yeah, the execution yeah, yeah. of it, what it is. That release was dictated on my interest heavily on the design of the shoe. Yeah. But yeah. if you're like, you can either have like uh, a fucking 
uh, all, okay. y- you know. So what let's I mean. do this. So what if it was the Jordan one Royal and the Jordan one uh, bread? Yeah. Didn't know which one you were going to get, but mm-hmm. it was just like the red blue, oh, or yeah, the red pill, or the blue pill. All over that. Yeah, which I, would one, do it. I, I like want both shoes. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. Like if so, if the design and the execution is good enough that you would hands down buy of either course. one, yeah. you would take that. So execution, right? I get it. Yeah. Yeah. No, that makes sense. I'm just not a fan of the nines. But it's or, really hard no. then for like a sneaker company yeah. to make sure that your execution, because who knows what, what will sell and what will not. Right? Well, we talked about it last week, but it, you by the time you're designing it or coming up with the idea that, you know, by the time you release it, people are like, meh, who yeah, cares, right? That's true. So you have to be on it. You know, you have and to production, really know your, your production and, and design. How long in that takes like six months, you think? I'm, I'm guessing more than a year. Yeah. More than a year. Oh, yeah, yeah. New wow. silhouettes. I mean, it's probably better now because they can use change 3D. in a year, right? Yeah. Well, they use 3d now to, you know, to design yeah. the shoes and yeah. you get a better idea rather than tooling a whole shoe overseas, getting it back and going off. Oh, we don't like it. And then yeah. doing another one. Well, so. um, I heard an interview ages ago with Tinker Hatfield and one of the most interesting things he said, is like, man, like when this shoe came out, blah, blah, blah. I was like, were you expecting it to be such a hit and everything? And Tinker Hatfield's fucking most honest answer was like, I, I didn't realize it was a hit. I was too busy already making the next one. Wow. Mm-hmm. And like, that was a year ahead yeah. of the release. And yeah. like the, the amount of work it takes to get something off the ground into a final product in the consumer's hand. Yeah. That's like probably 12 to 16 months or wow. 18 months. Right. So yeah. we're talking about like a long, long time before like, I have a feeling Nike and Adidas, they know what's going to be out for the next two years. Mm-hmm. It's almost mm-hmm. like how um, uh, Apple was saying, like, oh, we're, like Steve Jobs dead, but like at least we already know our fucking plan for the next 10 years. No. Like It's something like that. They already have shit like, planned way ahead of time. So um, I think something being hot or not, like they have some idea, but at the end of the day, it's still up to us, the consumers, that actually That's true. De- determine whether something is cool or not. So. Stories sell, man. Like, honestly, like... It does. It, it, the stories for... It's execution. Yeah. Long story short. Oh, right? definitely. If a shoe looks nice, but the quality is crap, then yeah. like, nobody's going to go for it. Yeah. And vice versa. If the quality is great, uh, but like the price or the design sucks, mm-hmm. nobody's going to want it. Mm-hmm. Like For example, like look at the Weatherman a series, right? There was like... Uh, the heat map on the foams like yeah, the first yeah. one sold great on the KDs but like the, they did the same pattern for like the next couple of releases on the on the KDs um, sh- uh, signature shoe mm-hmm. and they didn't sell a fucking anything significant at all just because people didn't like the the actual final product even yeah. though the theme and the story is there and people fucking bit hard on the first time yeah. it, it didn't repeat mm-hmm. same with Raining Champ yeah Raining champ and an awesome first ultra boost, mm-hmm. but just because you're riding that hype and he goes, and nothing's guaranteed anymore, man. Just because yeah. it's the same collaboration, same even the same, almost the same shoe. Yeah, that doesn't guarantee anything because execution kind of failed on on some of the consumers, um, you know, minds. Right? Oh, there's so much speaking, they could have done with that. Uh, yeah. Speaking of theme shoes and execution done well, um, the new that the recent release of the Mars shoe. Ah. Fantastic. That's yeah. Jason's wet dream. I yeah. really like it. I, I really love the first one. I want to um, give a shout out. Actually, sorry. No, go ahead. I want to give a shout out to Pinder, one of our yeah. awesome oh, yeah, listeners. Saw, local. Dude. Who is using those for beaters? <laughs> and he traded in a bunch to get those too. Really? Like, yeah. yeah. He had a post about that. Um, good for him. Yeah, good for him for using. Yeah, them. I wanted to give him a shout out. He's and an avid listener. Tinder, don't listen to your wife. She doesn't know. I know those are, those are beautiful. Shoes. They're yeah. not shit. Yeah, don't worry about it. You're fine. Yeah, I have the beautiful. Oh, but I haven't heard a single person that's like those are whack. I haven't heard any complaints about the design of the shoe yet. Have you heard of Stop. any older kids saying that they're that? I mean, younger kids that say they're whack because they're, they're mostly geared towards like the younger the kids don't even know this thing exactly. exists. There you go. Mm. Yeah, like. Before we started talking about, did you know who uh, Tom Tom Sachs? Did you know who Tom Sachs was? No. Do you know him? Like, you have a better idea who he yeah. is now? Yeah, I do. And that's the well, that's the second collaboration yeah. with Nike, actually, yeah. um, with the shoes, anyways. Uh, but like, that's we talked about this before in a previous podcast. How a collaboration like that will bring attention to someone that's actually worth people looking into, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. you probably gain a little knowledge and yeah. you're enriched your fucking. Um, you know your ideals and everything just because you went back and did a little research yeah. on it because it was raised aware to you uh, by this collaboration mm-hmm. which I think is the right way to do a collaboration I think yeah. it's a re- and as a responsibility of a responsible shoe or a sneakerhead 
that's what I think you should do. Mm-hmm. It's just yeah. to learn and know about the culture. And that was the, yes. uh, there was an Adidas release with uh, an artist named David Arsham. Okay. Um, and his I didn't know anything about it. I, I had seen the shoe out, but there I hadn't seen much of a story or a promotion around the story. There was a little bit. Um, and the shoe itself is looks very like deconstructed. Um, like frayed edges, but then in in black light you Ooh. see some the past me. Frayed oh, edges. I Gets think me, I know dude. which one you're and, talking yeah. about. But I went and watched um, uh, a video on him and like his history and like yeah, his sculptures are amazing. Yeah, um, because he's partially colorblind. Everything oh. is in like muted um, gray tones, yeah. so black through white, wow. and he uses a lot of like volcanic. Um, uh, like gray ash? Like, yeah, he uses ash like and, colors, he, yeah? and he uses uh, crystal. And so you see some of the shit that he's made and it's just like mind-boggling. Speaking of so crystal. So cool, so cool. Swarovski yeah. 97 silver bullets, you see those? No. I, the <laughs> what black girls? Ones? Is no. this a real thing? Uh, silver bullets, Swarovski yeah. crystals, 400 bucks US, yeah. women's sizes. Okay. Can Jamie get me one? <laughs> wow. I love Swarovski, dude. I've been to the Swarovski plant because we have lighting and stuff. Yeah. yeah. I'm they're awesome. Yeah. But then they're going to encrust it on a silver bullet. So on the lines, on the grays. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Where it's reflective and yeah. stuff. Yeah. I, I think the reflective yeah. is still going to be there. I just saw them today. So. Okay. So the Swarovski Air, Air Max like one? Bling. What I is this? Air Max 97 OGs. 97 OGs. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You guys cool? Just Ooh. get a pair of OGs and make your own, man. Just go to a Swarovski and be like, give me a handful. Just smash <laughs> some lights at work. And then make this guy go get go fix yeah. them. Yeah, man. Yeah, you, get, you get to learn something new, Kurtz. Oh, yeah. At his expense. Great. <laughs> <laughs> Broken glass. Do you remember uh, when Bape and Swarovski also had a line? Whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. So, like, Bape would have their just regular-ass T-shirts, right? So, you can see the big ape head on the front, like you see on some of the classic um, uh, screen shirts. But the entire ape um, element of the screen would be covered, just covered in Swarovski uh, crystals. Oh, you have my attention. And uh, BBC. How do you clean that? What? How do you wear that? <laughs> yeah, You're going to be dropping <laughs> shit. Like, I know. Like, you'll be littering, right? So, like Swarovski crystals. Yeah, I guess like, one if, of those like display pieces. I guess so, but like you see them in music videos and shit, and that's about it. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, it's a runway piece. See, when yeah. it's crazy when clothing gets to like expensive and more elaborate like that because yeah. it's not it's experimental clothing anymore it's experimental yeah, yeah. It's like an art piece yeah i'm looking at like louis vuitton supreme stuff that are like six g's yeah and how do you even wear that if i pay six g's or maybe re- like even like what like the retail is insane yeah already yeah. well the biggest misconception of that uh collaboration is that people were like trying to go to supreme and cop this shit and like supreme sells t-shirts for like 35 40 dollars a piece and that's a supreme supreme pricing right but what they didn't realize is it's going to be made by louis vuitton so now you're paying louis vuitton prices mm-hmm. and like mm. thousands like three thousand dollars five thousand dollars for one of their shirts or hoodies they don't even make hoodies if you ask me yeah but like for like a sweatshirt that's about louis vuitton price yeah and it's nothing out of the ordinary in that world yeah. but now you're like you know exactly what I, where, where I'm going with this. Like now, you're attracting like a, a demographic that's not really catered for uh, luxury brands. Like no matter what you say, I you can't treat Supreme as a luxury brand. It's no. a streetwear. Streetwear. So how would they think that? Because right now Louis Vuitton can stand on its own without any collapse. Yeah. Fair. Yeah. Yeah. Why do Definitely. this? Because to get a younger consumer base. Uh, Fair, like for, yeah. Louis, trust Louis me, Vuitton, man. Yeah, I don't know if they'll sure. admit it or even are happy with it, but like I don't know, like fucking the rappers first, it, are making well, them the more popular one, than ever. And it's the first one to yeah. really kind of bridge the gap between yeah. those two streetwear and high fashion. And I mean, Gucci probably would be Louis the next Vuitton's one. been. Well, I don't know if like they have if done any collabs or anything. They haven't done collabs, but I mean that would be the next one that right. I would see. We've had conversations about yeah. this, where like. Sometimes having a collab with a high-end brand with someone that is not to their echelon mm-hmm. is like, this is not really good for us. Remember you had an example where like they were telling people, we don't want to associate ourselves with this type of person. Oh, that was Joe and uh, mm. Cristal yeah. being oh, associated yeah. right? with a certain yeah. image. Yeah. Because it deter- deters it or, yeah. or lessens the brand. Yeah. yeah, like that is true. But at the same time, like... But that would be if Louis, Louis Vuitton lowered their prices... 
right? right? Like if they lower their prices to supreme prices, then right. but they it's wouldn't do the brand quality, yeah. right? Yeah. No. Well, they wouldn't. the good thing about Louis Vuitton is like they're not going anywhere. They've been around for like over a hundred years and shit. So, I think it's the um, the the director of Louis Vuitton now that Kim Jones. Mm. There's something in his backstory where I mean he's had connections with streetwear brands in the past yeah. and stuff. So I think that's why. Cool. You can now, piss on. Yeah. Sorry. You can piss on this collab all you want, but Drink. at the same time, it's something new and exciting that yeah. we haven't seen before. Thumbs up for you, Eugene? Thumbs up for me. Like, it, it's yeah. not for me. Yeah. Like, trust me. Just too expensive. Yeah. yeah. Like, it's not for me because I do have Louis Vuitton stuff, but that's besides the point. It's like a keychain is like a hundred bucks. You wish it's a hundred bucks. It's more than that. Is that Supreme hat still here from that? Supreme? No, they sold it. They sold it? Ago. Yeah, of course. They actually have a Supreme piece in here. I don't know if it's still here, but oh, I, we saw or, it they last lock, week, yeah. or they locked it up, whatever yeah, it yeah. was. Um, anyways, mm-hmm. I, I think it's interesting, and who knows what it's gonna what's gonna happen from this? Maybe they'll have another season with another brand or the same collaboration. Range, right? Exactly, there's a lot of stuff. I think they would go with a different brand. I don't think they'll go back through Louis Vuitton again. Well, how do you how do you go up from Louis Vuitton? I though? know. It doesn't necessarily need to go up. It just needs to be lateral. Could be parallel, yeah. right? Going but the different. Louis Vuitton is on the top, like Prada, Gu- like Gucci's not even part of it. What what, is, what else is there? There's a lot There's of a shit ton yeah. of. Yeah, like, we true. are not in high fashion, so we would not yeah. be the that best. I, you know, th- how, that that's just the one that we're most. How do you guys with. feel about that collab? Was it something interesting to you, or something like I, I'm not interested at all because it's not for me? I loved it. I thought it was awesome. Yeah, yeah the jean suit. With they're trying to bring yeah, denim back. I'll give yeah, them that. Yeah, that's true. It was cool. It was interesting. I yeah. mean, it, it just seems so ridiculous to have that kind of price point with it. But it's not ridiculous. It's Louis Vuitton. If you have money, True, you can yeah. take it. Yeah. If you're used to that world, it's not surprising yeah. to you. And oh, I think he- most people who are um, rich or whatever that already buy yeah. um, Louis Vuitton will probably be buying this because it's only an they an investment. Only they qualify to buy those. When you walk into yeah. the store, they'll ask like. Have you purchased from us before? And they yeah. look you up and then they take you to a secret room and they buy it, right? Wow. And uh, here's what I like most about this collaboration. Um, you know how we talk about themes and themes standing out? If you look at a lot of their pieces in this collection, you look at it and you're like, it's instantly recognizable as Louis Vuitton and Supreme. You know what I mean? The red S- on the Louis Vuitton accessories packaging. though is very Supreme. Yep. Yeah, but you look at the pattern. Oh, here's the, the interesting pattern. thing. The all over monogram ish pattern that's supreme fucking stealing from Louis Vuitton, yeah. And now it's just come full circle. No, that's true. Louis Vuitton just going back and yeah. doing what they do that yeah. supreme copied that were a, like accustomed to seeing. Oh, that's like what supreme does, yeah. Like, no, that's what LV does, you mm. know. Eugene, one of the things that I liked about that collab too is that it seems like Louis Vuitton, if I was a Louis Vuitton entity, I'd yeah. be like, you know what? I'm going to st- step back. I'll put my Louis Vuitton brand on that. Yeah. But I'll give Supreme kind of like the 70. It's like a 70 30, in my opinion. Right? Where it's. Who's 70? Supreme. Okay. In the accessories line. is Okay. Yeah. yeah. In the accessories. Choosing line. what they're going to put it on. Yeah. And, what, and then. How crazy the designs would be. Yeah. What kind of clothing. The and... jean jacket or like the, je- the pants, yeah. that's more LV. Right, because they, so what I'm trying to say is that they pick certain things on which one they would be more rampant in in design. Okay. So I like that one. So whoever has a stronger uh, relation with that particular product, they get more of a stamp on it. Yeah. Okay. But I think it's more equal though. It's right. like okay, I'm gonna put. It, it's funny because like Louis Vuitton is always accessories, whether it's bags and stuff like that. True. But mm-hmm. most of their accessories are all bright red with the box logo, white supreme. True. Or, which is that's awesome. Well, to be fair, anytime you see a Supreme accessory, whether it be like hardware or uh, fucking utensils or whatever, those are always outsourced brands that they just put their stamp on. They don't make anything. Wow. The only thing they the make are product? like... Who? You're talking about Supreme? Yeah. Yeah. Like if you look at their water bottles, it's just oh, like yeah. a Nalgene bottle yeah. Or yeah. with a yeah. Supreme yeah. on it. And if you look at um, their sunglasses, it's just a different brand that they yeah. put their print on it, right? That's what they do. Yeah. They brand their shit onto existing... Um, do they license that stuff from those companies? Though? I'm pretty sure it's there a, must be a some very sort of agreement. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's like agreed upon both yeah. sides, right? Yeah. And that's what then that's what LV did, man. They just made their own shit and put their print on yeah. it. That's and, cool. I like that. The collab mm-hmm. was awesome. Yeah, I, I absolutely. I, yeah, I, I don't is... love every piece, but it's super interesting. Mm-hmm. The movement between like now we're finally have a tangible 
uh, example of streetwear crossing over into high fashion. This oh. is the one of the very first examples. Really? I think. Yeah. Like we've seen, you know, Lacoste and everything in the mid tier, like collabing with, you know, like Snoopy and this and that. And like we've seen stuff like that. Yeah. But now we're talking about. What the about m- Colette? Would that can be considered? Well, Colette is like an a entire store. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So. But they had their own stuff as well. They have house yeah. brand, but like no one's, y- yeah. you know what I mean. Yeah. But their main thing is yeah. like is uh, various brands. Industry we're talking about brand. like yes, yeah, yeah. Stri- yeah, the most sought after luxury brand versus not versus working with the most sought after streetwear brand yeah. right now. First and like, time, yeah. Of course, the hype was yeah. going to be insane, and it wasn't cheap. Like I had a buddy that um, was able to buy stuff here in Vancouver, and mm-hmm. um, and it was like. A chain chain yeah. wallet he got yeah. it was yeah. like nine hundred. Yeah. I think we've established and that they're not cheap. And uh, yeah, just the process like of yeah. him going in, he had to create a list of the things that he wanted. Yeah, yeah. and then they had to vet. Like meaning, you couldn't get everything on the list. What does that mean? They well, one they had to approve what you were buying, so oh. they would look at all these things, and then we go, okay, we approve. Yeah. To you know, we're gonna vet you as a customer and as a person, yeah. and then crazy. We're According say, to here's the things that you can buy. You have to put them in order of what you would like them. Like it, what's your That's most a good important? Thing, though I think then it would go to Louis Vuitton New York. Yeah. And then they would vet you as a customer and really? be like, yeah. yes, you can sell this, this, and this to them, and that's it. It's based on your purchase so, history with Louis Vuitton. Yeah, yeah. And then, like, depending on how much you've spent in the past and how recently you've spent, you qualify for certain tiers of products yeah. that you're allowed to buy. Mm-hmm. And only the the most frequent of LV shoppers would get something like the backpacks. Or is, the that why, yeah. is that why there's, like, 45, 50-year-old ladies that have, like, supreme drops and stuff and, and, and side bags and We're stuff We're talking like about that. it's not uncommon for certain uh, certain areas that have a louis vuitton store to yeah. have people that shop there every week yeah we, I, I see it all the time in, and b- uh, do you think those people who are shopping there every week give a shit about streetwear brands no no so they probably buy and go there, that there's a few sell I bet, it to other people because they don't care or they give it away to their kids because they're like man i, don't I care bet about this. there's a few kids that probably won the lottery last year that's fucking all up Loving on it, it. and yeah. like maybe a couple of um, mu- musical acts or performers that's still young and rich, they might be frequent shoppers of Louis Vuitton and still give a shit about um, current streetwear scene. Like that's the the demographic they're catering to. Mm-hmm. But I don't think like the sixty year old businessman is going to be like, oh, oh I good. bought yeah. I bought a watch and a wallet uh, last month. <laughs> a I'm gonna... chain wallet. <laughs> exactly. I'm gonna get up <laughs> <A> on chest. <laughs> this. I gotta, I gotta get up on chest. this Bunch supreme backpack. Yeah. You know what I mean? But is, isn't it cool if they they cop that stuff though? Definitely. Right. I I. Wouldn't you fucking take a second look if, yeah. if you saw that dude, 60-year-old dude with a briefcase and a backpack walking picture, down the street? Yeah. A picture and a selfie, dude. Yeah, man. I'd right? be like, you're my idol. <laughs> Anyways. Anyways, uh, what's on. the next one? So I, there's one release that came out last week. Uh, we kind of touched base on this with uh, Kicksteel CA. Mm-hmm. Shout out. Shout out. And, out. and um, that was the Adidas NMD R1 Prime Knit Japan Pack. Nice. Well said. Good for you. I, I had to close my eyes and imagine. Sometimes the when words. you do from the intros yeah. to the when you regret, he doesn't take... close his eyes during the intros anymore when he's trying to remember the. No, because it's natural. I like, now. I like that with well, my now, eyes open it. and the lights. It's up. awesome. Yeah, he's good. Like... Uh, so this pack came out, and there were a lot of um, people that lined up for hours and hours to get one or two of these pairs at the local stores around here in Vancouver, mm. and of course they sold out. Mm, they sold out ish. And the, the triple blacks, of course, that went first because there were fewer pairs. And uh, anytime you have a colored boost, it always is a higher demand. Than... Triple blacks, man. That's that's killer. Murder. Yeah. And then uh, that's why CRG triple blacks. <laughs> One <eight> <laughs> and then the, the, the triple whites or whatever you want to call them. Uh, those kind of sat around uh, yeah. in stores. They were sold out, but like there were some late shipments. You and... can still get them online right now, I think. Yep. Exactly, yeah. and that's what I wanted to bring up. If you had told me the first pack, when the first pack came out, like one year ish ago, that the second time they do it a year later, they would sit in the store or on the shelves, I would call you crazy. Did we talk to Kick Steals before they got released? We talked to them the day after they released. The day after yeah. they released. Okay. So um, I know we already talked about this, me and you. So yeah. if you haven't listened to that episode, go back one episode. We talked to Kicksteel CA about this exact phenomenon. So stop so, right now. Go and listen no, to No, no, no. Keep listening and then go back there and then listen to this again. <laughs> well, what's awesome is that if you come out of the YouTube channel and then you go back in, it saves the last time yeah. you watch, which is awesome. Shout out YouTube. That's hot. Yeah. Anyways. Anyways uh, first, lay it on me. Lay it on me. 
All right. First of all, how do you feel about the aesthetics of this uh, pack? Pretty plain. Like, that's I what mean, they were going for. I know, I know, I know. I get it. it but it, that's what you asked me. It's pretty plain with okay. just the Japan. Isn't it an uninteresting kind of plain to you? It's interesting because it's triple black. Anything triple black is interesting. Mm, closet hype beast. No. <laughs> no, he's out of the closet. Why is triple black interesting? Because this is a, first of all, it's the technology of the, not the technology, but first of all, it's triple, it's black boost colorway. Uncommon. So I'll give you that. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. It's. So is a, uh, a full black Jordan one soul. Yeah, but it's not. So would you NMD buy a, a full on black Jordan one? Okay, Tough can I question. give you an example? Tough question. I don't want to cut you off. No, no, I'll no, give no, you an you example. You, 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 Help me on this one, Eugene, because I know you you feel me on this one. Okay, I'll give you an example. Not exactly the Jordan, but um, mm. you know, uh, the painted boost, and that's really sought after right now because yeah. they're uh, uncommon and they're kind of rare. Yeah. Or, or not just the black, but like the reds and the whatever. So the colored uh, boost or whatever the outsole is usually demands a higher uh, market value for those. Yep. And uh, the good example I was going to give you is... Um, I've collected racers for, you know, numbers of years, yeah. right? And they've always had the, the standard white outsole with whatever trimming color that might mm -hmm. that might be variable. Mm -hmm. But uh, I stopped collecting them because I have like seven or six or seven pairs already. Yeah. But when the triple blacks came out, I'm like, that's hot. That black outsole actually makes me want to get another pair of racers. I'm yeah. back in. Yeah. And I went out and I got a pair of those at, at full retail. Yeah. And I, I absolutely love the execution of that just because... They are a triple black, so um, maybe not a Jordan per se because I can't imagine it in mm -hmm. my head right now or yeah. I have an example ready for you. But if you change up the, the color scheme of something that's uncommon and make it a little bit more rare, that will draw my attention and gain my interest. Thank you. And another thing that while you were saying that too is that the functionality of it. Like we all know that when white boost soles get dirty outside, they either yellow True. or yeah. they're – they. it's hard to keep up. Yeah. Is this boost – um, just paint it on the outside. It's only uh, yeah, it's just yeah. a paint. So but it's not gonna crack like a customized. They haven't developed colored boost per se yet. Well, they had brown, like the yeah, that the bronze boost. That is that not painted? Red. So you cut it in half. The boost inside is, is brown. Oh no as no, well? no 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 no! I meant it's the a colorway. Outsole, it's a, yeah, it's the yes. colorway. It's the colorway. So. so could the same potentially the same thing happen? You scuff it. You hit something. You no. take the top layer off, and now you got white boost yeah. showing through. As a customizer, do you yeah. think that they can? develop it as a one color probably not right because i would you're gonna sacrifice something be able in, to, but it probably yeah. you're gonna sacrifice something in either the makeup or the durability something's gonna change for just Might be, making it color yeah man yeah we're talking about like very like these guys probably took not adidas per se but whoever did it officially developed the boost technology yeah. they probably spent years and That's years true. developing the formula no, to make I can it see a, that and to fuck with it in any yeah. way I have a feeling like Adidas just gets the boost shit, do what they do with it, and then they don't fuck with it. Yeah. They're not going to fuck with a compound or whatever. That's probably pro proprietary um, technology that they don't fuck with. And they buy it as this, and all they can do is paint the outside of it. I'm thinking about it in just a regular sense is that I have like a bin of just styrofoam. I yeah. put black paint on it. It's yeah. probably going to adhere, but it's going to be thick, and it's not going to be as bouncy. That or, that could happen, right? Or like, maybe the individual boost pellets might fucking not not hold yeah, or whatever. Yeah. Like, there's a lot of things that yeah, that's unknown, true. right? I can see it doesn't that. bond and, properly. And I have like, a feeling you can't if paint styrofoam. Yeah. And I have a it feeling if it. Bass or whoever <laughs> is actually making this product, if they could have done it, they would have done mm -hmm, it. Mm -hmm. So there's probably some compromise in but the actual what, technology with coloring it. What would their advantage of coloring it be? more options dude why not why yeah. but why I mean, give they're me eight probably colors? not experimenting with stuff that involves like maybe it's like we just make space stuff and they don't have give a feeling a shit what color it is i have a feeling those right? bass f bass f guys are probably making this for utility purposes and mm. not for aesthetics mm -hmm. no and i think this is the first time that it's aesthetically pleasing that people yeah. want it that way so they're like Meh, yeah. it, it's, it's not a high on their it's priority true. list i'm just i'm my shortcut way of thinking is like maybe they just wanted some color on the boost and the quickest cheapest way to do it is just to paint the outside mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. that's just my thought yeah. it's got to be yeah. cost and it's got to be yep. some other uh, will me and you like normies like us we will never know because we're not working at Adidas or whoever yeah. comes up with the We're assuming. Shirt. This is all... This it is, is all alleged. Yeah. This and, uh, alleged just guesses. Assumptions. Yeah. And uh, I personally 
really i actually have a pair of whites waiting for me to have the money so to you have the for. pack i don't have the blacks that's that's too oh, yeah, hard yeah, yeah. for me to but get but you can still cop it from the restock tomorrow mm-hmm. on adidas.ca yeah you can try um, your luck it's mm. really successful you can man. try we can always, right. we always try. street signs here we go <laughs> <laughs> at least we're putting the effort like it's s- flat tires like other now. people <laughs> right? the find the nail in this picture <laughs> new is that the new one like yeah. nails no, now? Joe, you have to find no Joe's. you have to find the nail in the tire <laughs> Uh, okay, if, if if I'm not too hurting for time tomorrow, I'll give it a shot. Yeah. So I'll spend seven to seven o two trying, mm-hmm. and then if it doesn't work, I'll be out the you're door. No better work, than right? CRG, then, dude. If you're gonna spend two minutes on it, yeah. Right. right. Remember, we dogged him. If it buddy? says it's sold out, then that's the end okay. for me. All right. Fair I'll, I'll try till they say so. Sold so you got out. the white? But I have I have them uh, on lockdown. Oh. I'm gonna okay, drop the knowledge. What were you? Normie, you were gonna say something about you guys were talking shoe. about kicks deals. Oh, that's it. I just wanted you to have your input on yeah. how. How do you feel about this shoe not performing as well as it oh. did last year? What? Why has the hype dropped down this significantly? Japan Pack used to go for double, but the original Japan Pack was a. Was a white sole, blue and red, with a Japan. So for you, it's the execution of, of the actual final product. Yeah. yeah. So you, it, yeah. So I think the original was the black was with a white boost, and yes. black plugs, and then the white was with white boost, black plugs. Yeah. Okay. But I, then, okay, so my and they weren't PK. I'll, were I'll present P, this to PK? you. Of course, they were the originals. Yeah. So then what the fuck is the difference, man? Like, there's the boost, barely nothing. The I'll present you with this so question, hypothetical right here. Yes. What if these black and white ones came out last year instead of the ones that did? Would they be crazy hype like they were? Mm. Or would they be doing what they're doing now? I think it, it would, would be been. because they would it, they would be striking right when the iron's hot. So it's not just the aesthetic of the shoe. Timing. People are just kind of burnt out. It on, would have been the, the first triple black. It could have been. Yeah, I guess it would have. Because the Japans were right. like yeah. one of the first NMBs yeah. to release, right? Yeah. We didn't see any black boost until, until a the later Friends and NMB, family the one. Friends and Family yeah. NMD, yeah. right? So but it doesn't the, mean the, that like it's, it's still sold out. The black's still sold out. So they're yeah. still pretty good. Because they're limited though. But it's when you're producing boring. like the white ones, the triple white ones, they're, the triple white ones aren't even a mass produced general, general release per se. There's more of them. I'll give you that. Uh, but it's maybe... 50% more than the black ones at most at most and like they're still sitting on the shelves do you think it's because it's easier to make the white boost or is I'm it... not talking about the productions okay the production number I'm talking about the the ratio of black selling yeah. and the whites not selling it I just see. doesn't add up yeah, yeah. so what is it about uh, the people's mentality saying like I don't want it, do you think it's what I what I feel is like if they sit on the shelves I don't want it kind of thing kind of brat mentality that I have I think people are just NMD'd out. Yeah, you say that, but the black one's sold out. Well, What's dividing th- it? People <sighs> like the one. triple black will take triple black over triple white any day. So, Pierre, your final, your final thought on why it's such a phenomenon, why the white ones are kind of fucking duds. People, I see a lot of people trying to sell them for cheap on, online. And, yeah, and you're right. And triple whites were awesome at one point. Yeah, right? probably like six to eight months ago, they Tri- were still yeah. awesome. Tri- triple white Ultra Boost, triple white NMDs, yeah. they were they, they were, were awesome. Hot. Yeah, but so what the fuck happened the last half a year, man? Have our taste changed or have the market changed? It can't be the production number because it's not the big enough sample, uh, uh, you know, no. example. Yeah. So yeah, what is it? Like, do you think maybe I, it's just because boring? Just that's Japan? Why. Anything? The that fucking says triple white <laughs> Ultra Boost was boring, and they were selling out. But not anymore, and it's the same thing. It's just another yeah, thing triple with a white different Ultra Boost three point oh. Okay, can get are, those boring. Easily. Like, are the triple blacks not boring then? To me, they're still boring. Like, exactly. I'm just like, it's just a the, black shoe. Who cares? In, in in your equation, I would rather see a consortium come out. Than oh, you, that. everyone wants to see it, but of course, yeah. people like us don't get consortiums. We're no, too, but we're I mean, so if people see this coming out, they're like, uh, which one would I cop? I'd take the black. Yeah. And I think that's people's mentality. They'll probably just say, ah, I'll take the black one. Man, the what white. probably happened was people lined up. You get to choose one. Of course, they chose the black, and then yeah. the white one sat. And they're like, ah, the white. Oh, that's gonna be dirty in like two minutes. That's nothing to do with anything. People have been wearing all white shoes for the last two or three years. Well, they've remember? been wearing all white shoes since like the early 80s true so i asked you this i remember i asked you guys the day of the release when i was like oh guys there's triple white still and i can cart should i get it yeah 
and, and then said, and then okay, you ahead. said that oh you know what those guys, those are gonna sit there's lots of options yeah. I mean there's lots of those so I didn't buy them yeah I so, didn't mean to talk you out of it I, no I, all no. I said was like I, I I told you I personally yeah. like them yeah yeah, yeah, and yeah yeah even I'm getting a pair for yeah. myself no no you didn't talk me it's just again maybe it's the sense little, of urgency is gone it's a little bit of that mm. sense yeah. of urgency it's a little bit more of like harder to keep up with yeah right and it's an, another thing where it's like. It's another NMD that's plain and boring, like you said. So it's a little bit a combination of okay. all three. And is there other stuff that you'd rather have? Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. How uh, about if, if all of a sudden I'm like, hey, there's one triple black left in your size. Would you buy it right away? I, I'd get the triple black. That's because the triple black's really nice. And that's the. I'm not saying either of us are right or wrong, yeah. or the market is is trending the right or wrong yeah. way. I'm just saying it's an interesting phenomenon. Yeah. How it the is. same shoe can come out in. The exact opposite, but like one does so well yeah. and one doesn't do nearly as well. Speaking, That's the interesting part. Speaking of w- doing well, I actually had a buddy of mine, and you know, he's a he's a big Kanye fan and all this stuff, and he wants to speak on the state of the Kanye shoes. Oh. I know. I, well, we don't no, have to no, do no. it That's today. Fine. We don't have to do it today because like we've we've dealt yeah. with it so much. Like they're yeah. releasing so many V twos. Yeah. Is it a CRG or no? No, it's another uh, dude. It's another dude. Yeah. He well, actually, uh, in fact, a couple days ago, like it's so uninteresting to me. Like the Wave Runner came out, the Seven Hundred yeah. came out. I yeah, don't, I don't. Don't I, talk about I, it. I don't want to talk about it. Yeah, it right. is what it is. Uh, like zero, and, zero. Don't talk about it. Right, like that's the thing. It's like we don't even want to talk I think about it because like, personally, we're just burnt out of it. Do you think so? Yeah, I bet the people listening are disappointed. We're not talking about it. But, but there's a new, but there's a new silhouette, and we're not talking about it. Like, uh, now is not the time. Now is not the time. Why? Why is it not that time? We can talk about it. No, I'm just saying. No, I'm just saying. Why is it not the time? Because like... Okay, I'll tell you this. The actual release method of it was way more interesting to me than the actual shoot. Motherfucker. Stop talking about it because it's <laughs> part of STI. <laughs> God damn it. So just... Oh, oh I'm sorry. Stop. I'm sorry. All I'm right, sorry. I get it. I but, get it. I get it. Okay, we'll stop at that. <laughs> we'll, we'll stop cutting enough, into his enough. jib right well, now. Well, at some point, Aaron, we will talk about the state of yeah, the Kanye. We'll call you. The Yeezys, on the show. because... But to conclude, the NMD Japan pack. Talk. Yes. Triple Black sold out hot shoe. I know a friend of yours... Hot shit. Really yes. likes Triple Black shoes. Yes. Especially with boosting knowledge. Yes. And... And I, listen to the podcast. So, do you have a follow-up to Mr. CRG? Yes. So, this is to my buddy, my best friend. Um, He's asked me to bring it up because he actually showed... He actually saw... And he mm-hmm. does listen to us and all that stuff. He listened to the episode where we were critiquing his taste attacking his i like i like the way i said runner ability or his positive reinforcement (laughs) all he's okay all he wanted to say was that yes maybe it was wrong for him to pinpoint sneakerheads as ruining his running lifestyle but the one thing that he wants to make known is that just because you're a runner it doesn't mean you want to look you don't want to look good Okay. Your your coffee lifestyle matches his running lifestyle. Yeah. yeah. That's why we're best friends. And, but nonetheless, and, exactly. he he wanted me to let you guys know that just because he's a runner, he yeah. has – it doesn't matter what – his motivation to run is his motivation, whatever it if, – if a triple black and, and nice clothes will make him run a little bit longer – Okay, <laughs> well, what's wrong with that? It's not being Nothing. a hype beast. There's it's he, not okay. Okay, he what, is. We gotta have to, have to define hype beast on this one. But Hussein, he gave me an example. Hussein Bolt, who will always wear neon because that's his thing, right? That's the running community. That sounds a little thing, hype beast to him. Neon is. What is the hype beast though? Like something that. How is, can you buy a? You can't really get one running shoe that doesn't have neon on it. Like I think that's the. It's thing. not just that. Like, yeah, but that's why. If you want to wear something for its aesthetic purpose only, that's a hype beast thing. And no, I'll admit, I'm a hype beast right now. No, but he's using it for two things now. He's using it for functionality because he's researched the reviews and it's. A that's the shoe, shoe itself. Yeah, that's out of the then, question. Okay, we're but talking then, about the colorway. But there's two things that he likes, and he's drawn about that shoe, right? It looks nice, and he and he, he looks and he's stunting in it. Okay, but that's not a hype beast, though, right? Stunting isn't a hype beast. Either. Him saying that it looks nice <laughs> is him trying to say he'll look nice in it. No, I'm I'm with it on this one. I think I think like if if say, say Kevin Durant right, and he puts a colorway out that he doesn't like. 
Okay. There's no way that he's gonna release a colorway that he doesn't like, in my opinion. Uh, that's to be discussed. But go on. You think so? I don't think. Do you think he has a? I'm sure he has an approval on what re- gets released. And approval has, is one thing. ID. Him liking it is it. a different thing. Yeah, yeah, makes sense. Yeah, you know what I mean. But what I'm trying to say is that he said that it's okay for him to choose the color that he wants. Yeah, of course. If it's going to help him run. Sure. That's, that's fine. I'm just saying. And it, ha- he it, ha- very, it happens. He's very aware that, that the triple blacks are the ones that are sought after. Oh, my gosh. It, it's it's hard for me. Like, that's his mentality. And he might believe it. Yeah. But at the same time, we're talking strictly aesthetically of what this shoe looks like and what it will look like on this person. Okay. And you being so conscious of your appearance that is pretty much what a hype beast is. Nobody's buying a Bape sweater because of the quality, dude. They're buying it because they want to look a certain way in it. You're saying he wants to he, you're saying that run longer. No, but or it'll make him run longer. But guys, triple blacks is not a hype beast thing. A triple black is a fashion thing. There's <laughs> Exactly, you're proving my point. No, no, I'm like my definition of a hype beast is so say for example um, I ha- there's a shoe that's coming out, Yeezys, right? And you see and hear all this hype about people wanting to get it. Yeah. So right away you're like, oh, it's a cool shoe, but everyone wants to get it because it's hype. So now I'm a hype beast. That's what a definition of a hype beast is. Someone that's motivated to buy something because of hype first or second or whatever, but that's one of the main ingredients, plus they like it. And you kind of have to follow up with this. If he will actually admit to you or will at least tell you whether or not he wants a triple black because they're harder to get. No, he he would not. He doesn't want a triple black because it's harder to get. It just happens to be. What if Jason can paint one for him if he buys a core black? I'm sure he will take that, right? It is what it is. It's, yeah. It's like the, my, my personal uh, opinion on this. I'm not saying he's not a runner. I'm mm-hmm. not doubting that he's yeah. a legit runner. That's not the subject of argument right now. My argument is him being so conscious of the way he looks in a certain piece of clothing or shoes that has everything to do with the hype beast mentality. Okay. Okay. So let me, let me ask you this. I love baby blue. Yeah. Okay. And I go to a gym a basketball gym and I have, you know, a sick ass like outfit from basketball, yeah. whether it's like long sleeve whites, a baby blue, yeah. uh, North Carolina Jersey shorts that are white, some socks that bring out my, my shoes that are baby blue or whatever. Okay. Right. Am I high beast? Depends on why you're wearing all these baby blue. No, if, hold, if hold on. Like... Because for me, I feel like I'm Michael Jordan when I'm there. Okay. And I want to relive his collegiate years. Yeah. So I buy all this stuff. I feel good about it. Yeah. It makes me feel better when I play basketball or shoot that winning three like Michael Jordan. But I'm not a hype beast because it happens to be that these these colorways is not a hype beast thing. Well, that's different because you're emotionally attached to that color. If you're saying uh, it reminds me of Mike in the college years, that's one thing. Yeah. But if you're like, I just want to look good. I, there's no other reason except for, you know, it just makes me look better. And this is the best looking one. Hmm. That's and a lot different. even if that's one of the reasons that it, that goes along with the other ones, it's like that's, I don't yeah. know, it's pretty, that's vanity, right? Like most people are like, I'm just going to the gym, I'm going to play. Yeah, I want to have nice sneakers or whatever le- look decent. But if that's really your main driving factor, then. Hmm. I think it could be a two pronged of... approach. Just two this time. Just two. <laughs> All right. Three like I mean, just one. like just like like Joe, he's not gonna buy Ultra Boost the day of release yeah. because it doesn't gravitate yeah. towards him, he's right? Hypeless, mm-hmm. right? But then on the second, we're like, holy, like they're doing, they're saving the environment, and they have a colorway that I can relate to, right? Yeah, okay. I'll do that. So, but the one thing is, like, we had a really good conversation, and um, I. Right when he said it, I looked back and I was like, oh, man, I hope I didn't throw him under the bus or anything. No, you were defending him the best mm-hmm. that you could. I can. And then so the one thing that I really liked is that he did apologize to say that it is not our fault to ruin that. Because you know what it is? It's like trasher, like skateboarder guys. That, oh, I agree that like mm-hmm. a lot of the unwanted demographic is ruining that brand for legit skaters. As right. Well. Like, I mean, I'll, like I'll buy that. We talk, like we talked about that, like. Yeah. Me getting a trasher hoodie because yeah. everyone's wearing it. You'd be a poser. Right? Yeah. But 
I'm not a skateboarder. No. Right? So I'm exactly. a poser, right? Yeah. But for Same him, with me wearing Supreme, man. I don't skate. I don't BMX. At the same time, I just we, like the clothes. See, that's the thing. It's like people forget. That Supreme started as a skate brand. Exactly, brand. Yeah. I, I understand. Right, but do you think that maybe they've they've kind of lessened? They haven't really. They've right it's, now it's the roots. They're branded. It's the roots, but yeah. they're branded. And they're not branded right. as a skater right. brand anymore. Right, right. No, Trasher is sell skate decks and yeah. They try to maintain stuff. their heritage with how the brand got started, it's but the, probably not their main focus. But I have a but... feeling they don't mind the the people that are buying up their shit right now no, either. No, not. they don't because they're making us money. Out exactly. Of it. Yeah. So, um, like I said, it is what it is. It CR- is what it is. But just a little update. Yeah. To, CR- oh, CRG, I, I don't doubt that you're a legit runner. I, you're... You just want to look good while you're doing it. More exactly. More than most people. Run that extra five miles per hour. It's like, it's it's just, like a, dude, it's like a wave under- in a car. His Where, understanding of what a hype piece is, that's what I draw into question. That's all. The only reason why you would run further in those is because... I think because someone notices you wearing it and it gives you that extra boost. It's not about you giving yourself the boost, looking oh, down and I, you wearing the no, feet. No, you know what? It's the same thing as when I get a haircut, man. When I get a haircut yeah, and I know that I look good. That's just it because you – it's your own confidence, but it's because – you feel confident. And you know that people are going to be looking at you and appreciating the the stuff that you've but done. But that is is that a, is that the definition of a hype piece? That's not a definition of a hype piece. That's just a definite like You're a good vanity old, whore though. That's a good old definition of just confidence, right? Like. Oh. Just no, you're worried it's about like a your appearance effect. and what it's mm. a. You're it depend- worried about your appearance because you're worried about what other people think. It's it depends on what you put your you self think. worth at. If okay. you didn't give a shit, you'd be like Joe and just wear fucking yeah, sweatpants Yeah, but that's not hype beast. That's not a definition of a hype beast. A definition of a hype beast is someone that's motivated to buy something based on hype. Like so, fucking hi- getting haircuts is all hypey, in my opinion. <laughs> Yeah, way over I can't go get haircuts yeah. and everyone else is just going out there and being all Don't get mad at me. <laughs> haircuts are overrated, guys. Yeah. Haircuts are Especially overrated. if everyone's doing the same comb over yeah, with, with a line on the heart. side. Yeah. yeah, I get yeah. it. I I get mean, it. Go. That is a little bit hype beast too. I get it. All right. I I thought the last time we did this was a lot of fun and yeah. a lot of success. So I, I'm going to try, depending on you guys. So let me know if this segment isn't really working for you guys. So the listeners I'm talking to and viewers. Mm-hmm. Um, but I would like to reintroduce a uh, quick segment called mm-hmm. the STI. Very infectious. Exactly. <laughs> STI, of course, everyone's is our favorite. <laughs> STI is our take on. Uh, well, not everyone's favorite. Uh, everyone. Pardon the interruption. PTI, yep. mm-hmm. yep. and uh, the Canadian version STI yeah, yeah. is actually uh, short for "sorry to interrupt." Mm-hmm. That's very Canadian. It's very oh, Canadian. Nice. Yeah. yeah. So, Apologies first. Right? Yeah. How this works always. is we're gonna have multiple topics today. We have six. I think it's the same like, like yes. we did last time. So we have six topics. So. Well, for the first time, listeners. Yeah. So we have six categories, very open-ended discussion topics. And every single round is one of these categories. And it will be timed at three minutes. So you will present the question or topic. And mm-hmm. then we will discuss in a free-form way for exactly three minutes. And whatever happens at the three minutes, we just stop the conversation. And we don't draw a conclusion. Mm-hmm. We don't say who's right or wrong if, because no one's right or wrong in these open-ended discussions. Oh and God. just take it uh, for the li- listeners and viewers, just take it for what it is. It's just an open forum to discuss uh, hot topics. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And hopefully, and then holler at us yeah. if you agree or disagree, or yes. if you let us know what you think about you know what we say. We say some outrageous yeah. shit, so <laughs> holler at fun. us. It'll be fun. All right, you ready? Let's yeah. do this. Here we go. Let's do this. So, since you guys blew one of my questions earlier uh, a few minutes ago, we'll go with that one first. So, um, what was the best thing about the Yeezy Seven Hundred release? I'll let Pierre go first when the time's ready. Go, go. Just a different kind of silhouette. Like, I mean, I'm so tired of what, just going through V2s and what colorway that they are or not going to release. Or they're Do gonna... you like the silhouette at all? Would you buy it? It's a, it's just a regular shoe, which is... <laughs> I wouldn't buy it, but it's, yeah. it's, okay. it's, 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 it's a different shoe. So the best thing about the shoe is just that he introduced a different shoe. Yeah. Okay. Right. Well, no, that's fair. Yeah, enough. it's yeah. just a different shoe. It's fair just enough. a breath of fresh air. Whether okay. it's is it, we already is know the technology is different. What or is it? Fresh air or bad breath? It's something. It's full boost. <laughs> yeah, according to what I've read. And Invisible it's covered, boost. so yeah. you don't see any boost stuff on. Yeah. It's kind of like the crazy lights, I think. Yeah, where it's encaged yeah. in something, which is even better. Here's what I do. You mind? Here's what yeah. I think about it. Sorry to interrupt. All right. Here, here's what I think about it. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> this, <Real nice. laughs> this is a um, $50, $60 looking shoe that sells for 300 so I have a problem with that first of all. Okay. So I'm not up for the exact, you know, you know the the actual shoe itself. I'm not a big fan of. Yeah. I'm not gonna shit on it. It's just not for me. Yeah. Uh, I think that's very fair. Mm-hmm. Uh, but what I do like about this shoe, if if I haven't already covered briefly, is the way they released it. Yeah. It was out of nowhere, spontaneous, quick release. It was kind of like like crazy, quick, strike. quick, quick, quick hyper strike, <laughs> hyper strike, and um, no, there was no details about when it would release yeah. or around when it would release yeah. it just dropped yeah. and then people mm-hmm. that were ready or not no one was ready no one was ready but notifications people, maybe people but... that were that gave people more of a fair chance getting this shoe than any other yeezy release so far mm-hmm the only thing that you can equivalent this to would be the Calabasas because they made so bloody many of yeah, them. Yeah, yeah. But if you're talking about a limited release shoe, mm-hmm. that might be one way to do it for these ultra, ultra yeah. limited release shoes. Like, no, no, around when they're gonna come out. No, um, you know, no guesses to what they just drop mm-hmm. and then whatever. This is a pre-order, dude. It's not an order. Oh, what? They come out in November, dude. Oh, it's a Lavar Ball shoe. So I don't is even know. Everyone doing the Lavar method now? Or? Well, maybe like just they, the maybe waters. they were scheduling yeah. to release on November or first or whatever. Yeah. That's the shipping date now. Maybe they were just doing this and like just flip the script so that people wouldn't be ready and like everyone with you know fucking internet. Well, would... you know what, dude? Let's not worry about it because they're gonna probably release it, re-release it again in two months or maybe. I mean six in months after. Release. Yeah, we don't know, right? Because right. they've been doing that. Like remember the zebras that were right. limited and then okay. they re-released it so like everything went down we'll get the chance to cough so maybe that's what they're gonna do in the future like release it online do a soft release yeah. online and then whatever happens they do the remainder in the store so when the hype dies down people that actually want the shoes walk into the store and get it pretty interesting release if though the calabas mm. calabasas came out in store right now there wouldn't be as much hype about around it because they're still sitting <laughs> okay uh, you know sorry. where i was going I with know that where you're going i know yeah. where you're going no, I think it was yeah. It was yeah, a, it's it fair. That, yeah, I like that. That was the. That's why I brought it up because it was like exactly a really interesting out yeah. of nowhere release. Not so. so much the shoe, more of the release is yeah. interesting to me. That's just different for me. <clears throat> Go ahead. Uh, Round two just, just of the deciding. STI. Okay, uh, let's go with this one. It might be interesting. All right. So next question. Um, Big Baller brand, or so earlier this week it was announced that Big Baller brand will be in uh, the new 2K18 uh, NBA game. Are we going? Hold on. I'm ready. I Hang on a second. The thing yet. Yeah. Okay. So, I got a lot uh, to say already. <laughs> so, and this was through Forbes. Um, so, what will this do for 2K uh, and the Ball family, and who really benefits more out of this? Timer? And go. Okay. I'm I'm buying it. I'm buying 2K18. Okay. Because you, of that, you are. I'm buying because 2K18. of that. I'm gonna buy uh because of that. I will buy a next gen console and get 2K18. What? Yeah, that's honestly, not ex- that's not because it's a it's he's a character, dude. He's a character, and the fact that he is going to be wearing big baller brand shoes, I may not pay 4.95. For a big baller shoe, <laughs> but I'll pay four ninety five for a place for a co- for that's a worth to me. Oh, okay. yeah, right? So I'm not. That a- would uh, be a dope collaboration, though, right? If you got the console and you got the shoes for free. Let's, let's don't what? don't play with my heart right now. Honestly, um, I think Eugene. that I'm not done yet, Eugene. Oh, oh wow. yeah. I sorry think, to interrupt. Sorry. I'm sorry. No, uh, um, I think that it is good for the baller family because yeah. now they're kind of going into mainstream. It's a little bit being accepts, accepted. I don't know what kind of royalties that they get from that, but I'm sure that they negotiated it to the fact that it's yeah. now okay. So it shows you that they're a little bit there's a little bit more more chance of them collaborating with other people. Mind you, this is good for them too because it brings out the baller brand together as as one entity in my opinion. I and think it's ha- awesome. You think it's good? Do you think it's good for 2K? Yeah. Okay. If it's they I'm sold so, one copy. It, I'm, I'm sorry, but like... <laughs> and two, a console, apparently. 2K18 <laughs> is like the pinnacle when it comes to basketball games. Yeah. Um, and if you it's in the game, choices, it's in the game. It's, yeah, thanks. That's <laughs> brand, I'm out. Your, your, yeah. your turn, Eugene. Um, I think that... I, I don't think it's going to make any movement for either uh, 2K or the big baller brand. If anything, here's, here's me being cynical, okay? What I would think would happen is like, 
I, me and my friends, like you guys, we'll just create a team. We're like, ha ha ha, wouldn't it be hilarious if we were all dressed up in the Z02s? That'd be hilarious because that shoe is so terrible. But you're playing a game that you bought a console. But now you're clowning the fucking shoe. I'm not, I, whether it's, clown, can, whether no, it's clowning can, or not, you still bought the game. I buy the game anyways. I'm I'm not a part of the conversation where this will sway me yeah, from buying the yeah, game. I, get I bought it, I get every it. single year since like 2014. Yeah. I love that game. This shoe being in there is going to do more damage than good. In my in my disagree. Co- home anyway. disagree. damage to 2K or damage to the ball family or both. Disagree. The, Why the, would the you game even will say survive. that? Like, the, the game yeah. is going to be fine either way. Yeah. What I'm telling you about is like you know like if you give an option out there like that for people to choose, of course they're going to Ironically, pick the shoe. That's not a good look. Who's gonna? I, no, I say, no. Jason, do you th- so, do you think that the Ball family had to pay to be in the game? That I will. We might never know. We might but never what, know. What's that. your opinion based on what you know of the family and stuff? Do you think, or do you think Two K had to pay Lavar? Two K had to pay. To I don't think Two K. I don't think the Ball family's paying anything to get them recognized. If do anything, Two K would pay them some kind of royalty because it is their brand. <laughs> That was a good round. Fuck. Right. Sorry. No, that's, that. that's, that's the, the whole purpose of this. I'm at, if Quick. that's the case, I'm getting that. Quick. I'm getting that game. Yeah. That's what do you guys then. play? PlayStation? I do PlayStation. Okay. <clears throat> uh, so that was... Imagine LeBron in, two, in Big Baller Brand. Yeah, that's the it'd, be, it'd be hilarious, right, Pierre? But it's still cool. <laughs> it's hilarious, right? It's still... Whether it's irony... I get a chuckle out of it. Whether it's irony or if it's legit, it's still there. It's still they're still being talked about. I'm not. It's a novelty idea. It's, what's wrong with that? Nothing's wrong with it. It's like when you've discovered that you can put big head mode in. <laughs> We're gonna NBA have to make these five minutes from now. <laughs> yeah, <just> like, <laughs> that's what you did because it was funny. But this is big head mode for your shoes. No, yeah. it's not big head big mode. Head mode. <laughs> yeah, it kind of is. Okay, get going. Let's go. All right, round so, three of round STI. three. <laughs> so. If you're not inflamed, you're going to feel it now. <laughs> it's burning a little uh, bit right burning, now, guys. It's burning. Uh, so, okay. Uh, so, if you were a sneaker brand CEO, oh, yes. Um, which charity or cause, if you weren't already involved in one mm-hmm. with your company, uh, which charity or cause would you get involved with? Can I go first? Yeah, and Eugene Lee's first. Yeah. And go. Okay, uh, I've talked about this briefly on a previous podcast, but the one charity that actually means a lot to me and I donate every year, every year without exception, is Canucks Place. Nice. Um, it's local. Yeah. And it, it it's for children. Mm-hmm. And that'd be my Dornbecker of, of lower mainland Vancouver. Yeah, yeah. And I, we're not going to argue too much about this, I'm no, guessing. No, we're not going to argue about it. How about you, P? Um, there's two things that I love in my life, and one of the one of it is my dad, and my dad has Parkinson's disease. Yeah. So anything that will benefit, you know, the mm-hmm. cure or yeah. or the education yeah. or the development of, of of anything that deals with yeah. that, that's to me is awesome. I let you design a mag. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. And then the next one would probably be um, animals or dogs. All right. Something to the SPCA or something that contributes to that type of, uh, you know. So it'd be like just straight up dog fur from reclaimed animals. So at least they're being used up. Is that what you're saying? No, Jesus. probably not dog fur. <laughs> <laughs> Unless okay. you're making in the Philippines. Now, now you guys are thinking very local. Uh, so what if your company is something that's a global, global? brand? Yeah. What are you going to do to reach the people that are across the globe, not just in your demographic that's here? Right. Mm. Both of those ideas are very, very local. Well, no, so. you can you can branch out. Like Parkinson's is is not just a local issue. Like I mean, it's it's epidemic. Like, yeah, when you say yeah, Parkinson's, yeah, yeah. Right. I immediately think Michael J. Fox found it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's a charity that's just that's the way I think oh, about yeah. it already. Yeah. So. But, no, that's true. Um, but I understand that the, the the how important it is to you as an individual. You know what? Because it affects you directly. So I I, I want to um, say this, and I don't want to be I don't want to sound like I'm being an asshole and making fun of it. Too mm-hmm. late. <laughs> because it's coming from me <laughs> that's at risk um, we have all the pink shoes for breast cancer awareness yeah why not have a testicular cancer awareness shoe what would it's it, funny that you um, should say that yeah too or what prostate. color would it be what's that what's the official color of prostate cancer uh, dark uh, fleshy it's, tone <laughs> shut up <laughs> it's a little darker <laughs> from the Careful, rest of the shoe <laughs> we're gonna blue. get calls from the prostate guys no, and be like it's, but it's baby like baby, baby blue, blue and, yeah. and kind of like this royal blue striped so they I, I'm almost certain they have their own foundation that they I'm not aware of they use a tie of. instead of like the, a ribbon? The, the, the ribbon and okay. stuff like that but yeah. Uh, as as guys who buy a lot of shoes, I'd be down for that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, who? It, it's not a matter of who gets affected; it's it's when. 
Yeah. It's a, yeah. it's an epidemic. My dad had it years ago yeah. and he's yeah. thankfully he's good yeah. doing well now, awesome. but Thank God. there's a lot of people Survivor. that Yeah, yeah, for sure, you know, and it's cancer is a big thing that's running exactly. my family and yeah, stuff. Man. So Really? So when you see um, like Oh, sorry. Bad. No, that's but when okay. when you ding, see ding. like the entire grid or the the football field filled with p- pink shoes, it raises awareness for breast cancer. Why not have a baby blue shoe that raises awareness for prostate cancer? Is there a way where it's too much awareness? N- what are you? No, I'm just I'm just uh, saying. Uh, I'm asking. I'm just asking. I'm no, asking because no, 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 never. Okay, never too much awareness for something that's worthwhile. When they have pink wristbands <laughs> and everything is pink, is that a negative? No man, it's no. dope. I think okay. it's absolutely awesome. Timer's done. Okay, be quiet. All right, LeBron. So that was the, an okay question. In you guys the ZO2s, okay. huh? In the ZO2s, <laughs> dude. Paul George in the ZO2s. How many do we got left? We got three left. Uh, Let's do okay. this. So, this is uh, the uh, in ZO2s. ZO2s. I like that one. We just couldn't fucking afford it. Yeah, dude. zero like, zero budget show, my zero friend. Yo, that's why you're buying a four ninety five instead, like. How much are PlayStations nowadays? Probably like three ninety nine, three hundred, four hundred. Yeah. yeah. All right. So, question four: five, four. Um, Is the boutique lack store um, <laughs> becoming lack extinct? Store? Um, is online big box stores and resellers ruining the culture, or like the uh, the the boutique experience? Okay. Whoever wants to start, go ahead, Eugene. Um, big box stores has been around forever. They do a lot of business. Um, it's it's almost akin to you know the big box grocery stores taking away from mom and pop stores. Or Pierre might probably be familiar with this. Like you know those big 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 box um, pet stores, <laughs> pet stores that take away from yeah. the, the. I didn't want to say any names. Oh but, my bad. Uh, but they take away a lot of business and they're actually putting them out of business is the small po- mom and pop store. But here's the beauty of sneaker retailers, especially bu- boutique lock stores, is that. Um, the brands themselves, they will distribute very, very limited quick strike, hyper strike, tier zero items that are unique to that that store. Mm-hmm. Say Livestock or Haven, they might get a shoe that the big box stores won't. And based on that trend of their um, of the product that's being carried, I think based on that, they they should have the strength to survive um, whatever the big box stores are doing. Mm-hmm. I think that. I agree with you. I think that boutique lock stores were always going to find their place in retail. Um, Just because that people still love the interaction between a face-to-face person. For sure. Right? But that's disappearing, right? Um, Online reselling. Not necessarily. Because if you still have copying issues, and we've talked about this many times. If you have copying issues online, the first thing you're going to do is like, I'd rather just get it in person yeah. because then also is that the feeling like the millennials nowadays they want it right away yes that's why there's resale yes. right when was the last time you were in a retail store for the experience or today like, today i okay. was at livestock today just chatting it up cool what's yeah. hot there what's sitting you know why how what's your levels like you know stuff like that um i was i was at um haven two days ago just checking it out but mm-hmm. The one thing that that it's it's always going to be the experience, right? Mm-hmm. There's always going to be like good stores will realize that there's these online ways of copying, and they yeah. got to find a way to to Navigate to bring those people that. in. Well, yeah. I'll put it this way: if you cop a pair of really hype shoes online, does that mean you're going to stop going to the fucking boutique lock stores and try and get a second pair? No, the business is still there. True. Whatever they have, that's hype. If it sells out at the big box stores, it's going to sell out at the boutique stores. Yeah, yeah. If it sits at the big box store, it's going to sit at the maybe it will sit at the boutique lock stores. Plus, another thing too is that um, these boutique lock stores or stores in general, they do a lot of events because it's a new way of reaching and tapping into. Mm -hmm. We've been to Adidas events, you know, and those are awesome. That will never, ever replace Uh, the experience online. far from a small mom and pop store. Yeah, but nonetheless, like, um, I mean, it's still retail, right? My only argument is, like, the in-house experience, the face-to-face experience, the fucking chatting it up, does that equate to them making money, though? Like I'll I'll just say my experience. If there's a shoe that's that came out that's sitting on the shelf, I would immediately. If you're a good reason, I would go to the small <laughs> store. Okay. How many rounds is that? That's four or five. That's four. All right, we got two more rounds oh, of the STI. More. Maybe so a bonus one if we get one. done early. Okay. okay. Uh, boutique lock store. I still have so much on that one. Um. Let's do this guy. Uh, this will be a fun one. If you could create your dream sneaker collab, 
what brands would they would you use <laughs> and how many are we left why to is yours the best so oh, i might judge so. it at the end so you get to choose whatever brands that are you're inspired by yeah and you know you don't have to say the silhouette or anything it's just more or less like which two brands would you bring together that okay. may or may not i would say that don't so a, exist so a brand that, that makes shoes and a brand that does clothing or okay. whatever you want it's up to you it's your okay. your your favorite okay brand's gonna do a collaboration on a shoe that you would be like i'm fucking down no matter yeah. what okay you first. oh yes yeah. me so first uh... oh i see you're gonna play off of me no i can okay i can do it yes but i think Please uh do. how many do we need start how just, many do you want? No, yeah. just one example. That's it. You, you're designing it. You you got to bring the two brands together. Okay, I'd probably do and Nike just favorite. because Nike because you know I'm a Nike head. I love Nike. Mm -hmm. Um, I would, I would do a an artist from the Kid Robot series called Huck G because I've always had and loved his toys, and he's not as big as Cause or Futura and all those guys, but mm -hmm. it's something that I can relate to. Um. Silhouette? Do I have to pick a silhouette or not? Uh, you can if you want. I mean, it no, sounds okay. like we might have time. But, you know, the you Air know. Max. Air Max would be dope. Air Max? Yeah. Okay. Just because it's just... I would mirror something that I have had a history with, right? Okay. So it's always going to be in my roots or something. Like, I wouldn't want to do, to do something that I don't know about. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So if I had to choose two brands to collab together to make a shoe that represents me, and I, I'm guessing that's just sure, the yeah. question. Yeah. Um, not minding the sales or whatever. Mm -hmm. It's just something that I would enjoy. I would pick two things that's very important to me. Okay. So when it comes to sneakers, Nike is very important to me. I fucked with Adidas for a long time. That's what got me into it. But the one that I stay loyal to was, of course, Nike. In mm -hmm. my mind, they can't do anything wrong. unless mm -hmm. They haven't done anything wrong yet. Um, so I would get a Nike shoe and I would collab with something that's very, very important to me as, as a child growing up. And um, it, it it spans all generations, and it's good and it's good for everyone. And that second brand that I would collab with is Lego. Oh, nice. I think Lego yeah. has a mass appeal. It yeah. breaks the gender, and and you know the anyone can quote unquote afford to get some sort of Lego yeah. set, and everyone in the world has played with Lego at one point or another. Cool. Sometimes they play with it when they're kids. Sometimes yeah. they're grown ups and still playing with it. Oh, so I think cool. there's a mass appeal with both brands. Nike is like the king of sneakers as of right now, mm -hmm. and Lego has been the king of toys since they've been invented. So that's why it, would be, it might look ugly and might not sell, but those <laughs> two, those two things those two like things. define my childhood is nice. Nike and Lego. Yeah, that's cool. That's what about good. You? Me, I never really thought about it. I just came up with the question. Really? <laughs> Can't think of it right um, now. Or just I would definitely. I guess we definitely have a lot in common in the sense that I'd probably choose Nike because it was probably one of the very first, um, you know, shoes. It wasn't the first shoe, but it was one of the first important ones to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and then the brand. Pff, it's tough. Like I had, it might not even be be a brand, but. I one of my heroes and idols growing up, oddly enough, was I loved everything Bruce Lee. Wow! wow. And so I, I think would they're coming out with a shoe just for you right now. I know yeah. there's the Kyrie. And stuff. Are you gonna get that? But I, uh, yeah, and I've always thought in, in my own mind, how would I do a custom that would reflect my adoration and appreciation for Bruce Lee? You know, but right. I haven't figured yeah. it out yet. So. so the one thing that I don't get about the Bruce Lee like colorways, it's not all about. <laughs> Well, it was always Game of Death was the reference. Right? Yeah, but so. I think it should. It, it, you say you think Bruce Lee. It's not. I don't think it's yellow in anything. I think more it's like black and red. That's why he was. That was the most iconic image of Bruce Lee. You know, do we have a winner? Do you want to pick a winner between the, the three um, of us? There's no winners. I think I would go with Lego because it's a much glow, more like yeah. a bigger mass appeal, you know, yeah. mass appeal kind yeah. of thing. Whereas yours Wait, is well, why are we a much winners more. Here? Oh, he said specific. he might. I, I would pick one that I like the most. Oh yeah. I yeah. mean, I would clearly pick taste. mine first. Oh, viewers and listeners, <laughs> let us know. Would you have a kid yeah. robot Nike or would you have a Lego Huck Nike? G. Huck, Huck G. G. Do you guys know Nike. who Huck G is? No, it sounds familiar. Yeah, he's a toy creator. Yeah, he used to do a lot of stuff with Kid Robot. Did a lot of collabs with boutique stores that boutique sell vinyl. Boutique Lack. Boutique, <laughs> boutique Lack, boutique Lack stores, stores in the Philippines. Like, I've actually traveled to the Philippines to cop oh, one. Oh, so of they those. were all fake. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Don't listen to him, huh? Okay. Uh, last one? Yeah, last question. Um, all right. Yeah, STI. It's already missed. STI. Them. Might be a little bit hard to kind of understand and try to. So, is the sneaker culture uncreative uh, hmm. in, its, in its purchasing? So, 
how do we create more Ronnie Figs and the people who crave history and love alternate brands? Okay. Does that make sense? Well, I think I'll let Pierre go first. I'm in deep thought right now. You gotta start the timer so, when when you're ready, Pierre. Give me a, a thumbs up. Does I it think, make sense what I was trying to I get come it. across with that? I think that yeah. you know, and he's really the only one in that, but anyway. I think um right now the the, the sneaker nation is is fit it, uh, fed with hype. Like everything mm-hmm. that you we're sheep. We we listen to what's good and what's hot and we try to get that. The people that deviate away from that are considered the ones that are connoisseurs, in my opinion, right? The ones that do the research and the ones that think about uh, their purchase first, right? Um, the Kiths, the Ronnie Feigs out there, somewhat those are driven in in hype also, a little bit. Well, that's only they hype create their now. hype because they've earned it. Mm-hmm. It's not like I know I'm you... not going to give any other examples, yeah. but like, let's just say some people that aren't exactly designers, their shit is hype right off the bat. Uh, like if they're a, a singer, a rapper, and they get into the fucking fashion industry, that's undeserved attention for a, a product that they're not directly associated a, or disciplined. But with. a Kith or a Ronnie Five Boost yeah. will sell out because of hype. That's true, but but it's based on something, right? It's based on his history. But it's yeah, based it's on based his, on his history. His but people, people you're people talking about how that? how we break out the mold of like feeding into empty hype, right? How how we can get designs and creations out there that's more original and celebrated instead of just feeding what's fucking been tested. Because everyone just buys a new Jordan when it comes yes. out or a okay. new Yeezy or a new Ultra Boost. And I, it's like, how do you think? I th- I think... Uh, sorry to cut you off. Sorry yeah. to interrupt. <laughs> uh, I think what happens is... Because it's quick. Uh, well, I think what happens is we need to um, encourage and feed the current generation of uh, people that are buying shit. Okay, like, you know, back in high school or whatever school when you were drawing, all you can do is copy shit. You know, that's your favorite drawing because, oh, I made it just like the one I saw. That's not creation. That's not creativity. Uh, What we have to do is like instead of like I try very, very hard not to shit on any shoe that comes out just because I don't like it. I try very hard. And that kind of open mindedness is what we have to encourage the younger generation because they're going to be making the shoes that the future generation is going to be wearing. Of course, the Jordans will always sell and probably but at the same time the next boost is just around the corner and ultra boost is just around the corner and we don't know who that's going to come from and if we don't have an open-mindedness about creativity and being accepted to fail or be unpopular when it comes to some sort of design then we won't have any innovation so if we shit on absolutely everything because we don't like it we gotta stop we gotta break the mentality of we don't like it it's wrong I don't think that's the right way of doing mm. things. Mm. I try very hard on this podcast or in, in life in general. Just because I don't like something doesn't mean it's wrong. And I'm always the first to admit, oh, what do you think of the movie? I loved it. It's terrible, but I loved it. Mm. I would say shit like that. You take it for what it's worth. Exactly. I tried very hard to see above or below the surface yeah. of everything and give things a fair chance. But but you're looking at it from like the, the, like the essence of things, right? But yeah. here's the thing. When designers design a shoe, yeah, of course they're thinking about the humility and, and the design process and what's going to bring That's it about. That's arguable, but right. go ahead. Yeah, uh, but the thing is, is that oh, oh, give oh. it one more minute. When 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 you people do one more? when people are when it's driven by hype, all that all that love, all that design, all that process gets yeah. dri- gets removed, right? Yeah. So saying that to be open, how can you be open when you're already driven by hype? That's the thing, man. When you are in a creative state of mind, you got to be very careful the difference the different difference between being inspired and copying. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That's a very very fine line. You can ask any creator, any artist out there. You can be inspired. Like that's why sometimes Nothing people is act- unique. Exactly. Nothing will be ever Let's reinvented say, and completely like no one's ever yeah. seen anything. We're all influenced by all the things right. that we've so, ever seen. But it's in the responsibility of the designer yeah. also to be bold and not yeah. not worry yeah. about if the shoe is going to drop or not, yeah. right? Because here's the thing. Designers can do have that. Well, like I don't give a fuck if this yeah. is going to bomb or not. Yeah. But then they're designing it for a brand yeah. that is they do have to monet- have that. Yeah, yeah, right. There is some of that. So but- it's their responsibility. Be like, okay, you know what? If I do it different, but I put boost on it, it's gonna sell. Well, because I know I, that it's gonna sell because it's hype. I think shoe companies gotta have some sort of leeway into giving a. Cr- uh, uh, I'm just going to finish my thought. (laughs) Giving a creator some sort of leeway out of their pockets because they got deep pockets uh, into being more creative. Like they are willing to flip the tab to take the risk. Mm -hmm. Look at the the Tom Sachs. 
it's not the most conventional shoe. It's something absolutely unique, and it's one of the most low key celebrated releases of the year, in my opinion. But that's not that's not a. The first design was for the astronauts. It's, this re-release is to commemorate that. So it's not really a design. It's not something new. It's it, was a re, it was a reinvention because the original one couldn't sustain use. Like right. It broke down in the first like one was five an art years, piece. less than five years. Okay. The materials couldn't hold but up. But it was the same colorways for what the, the astronauts exactly. were doing, right? Well, it's inspired by that of the 70s okay. kind of feel of like uh, f uh, space and... and um, NASA and that kind of era. Can, yeah. can I just give one last example? No, we, dude, we're talk this is done, so we can okay. talk about this. So like, a lot of these big brands have got deep pockets. I think it's somewhat their responsibility to encourage and you know finance the creative part of things. Look at big movie studios. They would have all the Marvel superhero movies that make billions of dollars. But at the same time, it's also their responsibility to be funding and buying up smaller independent movie that pushes the creative aspect of filmmaking forward. And that's the small chat. That's the risks that they would take, because they have some some sort of responsibility in you know producing and and distributing m movies in general. So they take their big nugget from the Marvel superhero movies like Jordans and Ultra Boost, and then they would use that to hopefully encourage um, aspirational, um, uh, creatively innovative products such as the indie movies or the Tom Sachs. Okay. But how do you change the consumer's minds though, right? So the consumer's minds is is purchasing uncreatively, right? Like they're only going for the things that are big tickets or hyped or anything like that. Like, you know, Ronnie Fai is the only person out there that I think of, you know, there's a few, but that comes to mind that he changes people's opinions on what they purchase. You know, like... That, that, it, that's true, but like it, it's hard to say because the consumers will just think what they want to think mm -hmm. and like i said we just have to somehow uh, let the current generation of consumers know that you know it, it, it like don't rag on everything you don't like just have a different mentality to, to answer your question it's really hard because you're putting the onus on the consumers right you're putting the owners on onus that the consumers will do the research and and realize why he did this right mm -hmm. instead of just going like hey man this is a collab it's got boost in it just different materials it looks better that's hype mm -hmm. you know um when the designer puts a product out there like the design process that's his but yeah. when he releases it out there he has no control if it's going to be good or not yeah he can explain like what the reasons why he did this and that but it's up to the consumers to listen to, decide to it. whether it's going to be popular right? or not. Yeah. There's going to be myself who was like, okay, you know what? I wonder why he did that. I wonder why he didn't put a, a, a cage on it. Right. I think if quality is of the highest and the idea is executed and aesthetically pleasing, I think that's what will generate buzz and interest yeah. and, you know, and that your story or whatever around it is there. Look at the so the Saucony uh, release. Yeah, right. I Same mean, thing. that is that is a perfect example of designers putting themselves out there. It's not. It's limited. It's hype, right? Yeah. But then, like my boy Will, he's like, this is mirrored um, with Fenway Park, mm -hmm. right? So it's that's why it's all green. And it's like that's the story behind it. Yeah. I know. I know, I know Fear of God just did one recently in Miami that they released um, clothing, but they released um, hats and they re envisioned the Fear of God logo to match kind of the Detroit Tigers look. Oh. Um, but I guess his dad used to be the coach of uh, Montreal Expos oh, and right. partly yeah. of, um, I think, also of Miami. Um, so anyway, he re did the original um, hats. Um, fitted and they actually got in contact with the MLB and who else was it? Um, no, I don't think it's new era. It's, it's one of the companies from that time. They actually made it to spec in the original factory. That's cool. Um, in the United States. Yeah. Um, to exactly how it was made uh, back in the See, 70s and 80s. That is awesome. Or 80s, I should say. See, if, if you're in it for the money, yeah. you know what a, an opposite way of the process for that? Yeah. I'm going to recreate that logo. I'll put this story and I'll put it in just some regular dad hat. Yeah. 
right? And no, and so he, it was about quality. It was about ensuring that yeah. the product was the same. And so then he had all like Daryl Strawberry. Dude, you have like, me already. I, I want to buy it. Yeah. Well, it was a pop up shop, so it was like the but, hats were two hundred US a piece, but you're paying for the name, but you're also paying for the quality. quality. And, yeah. and it's better, and better yeah, price and point then than they the found uh, photos of like just dons. And the, the other story was like the fact that there was this um, that African American um, baseball players had the swag that existed in that era, and they had their own way of st- styling how they looked, you know, like rolling up their sleeves mm-hmm. or you know you know one earring or whatever it may be socks like, there on was, top of, of their pants a, yeah. yeah and so there are these guys that in the league that were very prominent in their style and the way they carried themselves and and he wanted to showcase that along yeah. that was a, and it was just very cool it was just an interesting execution it's and a hard question that last one, though yeah that's a yeah. hard question because it's it's it, it depends yeah. on so many different variables yeah mm-hmm. it depends on the people giving like making the shoes and people buying the shoes so yeah yeah if you, you have to have all you know, a collection of cooperation to yeah. make that happen. But I I'm mean, all for change, even yeah. though I might not spend a dime on buying yeah. stuff. If that you're I a like. designer, I mean, if you design yeah. shoes, holler at us because we have a lot of questions about the design process. Yeah. Come holler at us. I don't us, know if please. I brought this up before, but, you know, sneaker shopping with Complex, whatever mm-hmm. they call it. Yeah. Uh, they did one with, uh, I don't know what he called it, Puff Daddy, yeah. Diddy. What does he call himself? Whatever it is. I don't know what now is. Uh, Diddy Daddy. Sean Combs. Sean Anyways, Combs. He, he did, they did an episode of this. And here's the, like, I'm not the biggest fan of him anymore. I used to be a huge fan of Puff Daddy. Best album, mm-hmm. Puff, Puff Daddy. Top three best albums, Puff Daddy right now. Uh, I'll buy that. Anyways, I bought two. Anyways, uh, <laughs> he, at the he bought all these shoes and everything. He's fucking, you know, he's one of the richest fucking hip hop moguls in, in history. And um, he, at the very end, here's what I loved about that episode, even though I'm not a biggest fan of him right now, is that he pretty much stared right at the camera and was like, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I'm buying all these shoes now, but like you guys that are watching, your generation are the next generation. You're the creators. Like, by the time, like in so many years, like it sh- it has to be and it should be your shoes on the wall. You know what I mean? Mm, yeah. yeah. Like yeah. I'm like that's yeah. a nice way to end yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. He's always been a pr- big proponent of yeah. doing your own thing. Exactly. Wow. Well, right? I mean, look at all the. He's yeah, done he's everything on his own. Yes. Man. Yeah. Is it Ciroc that he has? Is that yes? The, yeah. That's with, how he. That's Wahlberg how he got so and, rich. Well, yeah, and it's just finding different ways of generating yeah. money and creating it yourself. Fifty Cent then. had r- vitamin water. Yeah. Remember that? He like he was clowning it in one of his rap songs. Makes you bulletproof, man. (laughs) (laughs) So that was uh sorry to interrupt. Yeah. The STI. How do you guys like it this time? That was good. It was good. It's really good. Run it down. I I think it's just like the It's gotta be more seamless though. It's gotta be more seamless. Like quicker? Yeah. Well, you guys kept going past the time a little bit. Like, you know, I want to finish No, we were good for, like, at least four out of six. In in PTI, they do do go over time, but then... They let let you finish your thought. A little bit, yeah. yeah, I had to tailor some of the questions because Joe wasn't here. Ah, bummer! I knew they would, like... God damn it, Joe! What the hell? Him, heat him up a little bit. But Ruined next, our game. Oh, I know. We'll keep him for next week. We'll it's keep okay. him for next week. If so, people like I'm yeah, excited I'm for sure the next week. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, listeners and viewers, once again, let us know how you feel about the STI. Yeah. Like our segment, STI. And mm-hmm. if you guys have any ideas of cool segments that you think that would fit our yeah, personalities man. and stuff, holler at us because we – remember, we do this for you guys, right? We, I do it for me. Yeah, because we, could, we saw Self, your, your shoes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and us getting an audience is just a yeah. byproduct of me being selfish. In, in our own time, we talk about the listeners and how awesome they we have. We talk about you behind your backs, man. Don't, All the in, time. In a positive All way. All the time. Pinder, who else is there? Will, uh, uh, mm-hmm. uh, Brookie Do, Hat- Bruce Hatu, like Dennis, all these sneakerphiliacs, Zach, man. Oh. Zach, yeah. AH, uh, Hernandez. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Always supporting us. Brendan, all these guys, man. Oh, Brendan was the OG supporter. Oh, yeah. And think- we shared, like, the thing that connected uh, us and Brendan was our hatred for Chris. That was. <laughs> <laughs> and then maybe, maybe if these guys, maybe you guys want to. Uh, DM me uh, uh, an idea then I can kind of sneak it in Send the show nudes? And oh, without, yeah. without you seeing it because if it goes to you then in a comment or something like that then you guys will get <laughs> here, you get to think about it yeah. like, holler out your favorite personality there you yeah. go holler out your yeah. favorite let's, personality let's spend the last two three yeah. minutes uh, uh, addressing the, the audience right now okay um, mm. 
I'm always looking for ideas. Like we go into this fairly cold every single week, <laughs> fairly cold, ice yeah. cold. Um, and yeah. we're not hurting for ideas. It's just that's the way I like to work with mm. very little preparation. Yeah. That's how these um, kind of interesting conversations always spontaneously uh, occur and, and take place. Uh, but at the same time, I want to be as mindful as possible to cater this show for our audience. Of course. Like as much as I love talking to you guys, I know that without an audience, we wouldn't be doing this. We do much, this right? for them. Exactly. Yeah. So if uh, our, our audience, our listeners, our viewers have any suggestions, if they, if they like or dislike a certain portion of the show, if you think we're talking about, you know, like personal shit too much, let us know. Yeah. If you think we're taking our, too much time getting into the sneaker talk, let us know. If you want fucking Joe to show up more often, let us know. <laughs> And, and, and actually then, just direct all your questions directly <laughs> I to him. Joe. Talk, yeah. Yo, dude, Joe yeah. will answer them too. Joe, yeah. oh, Joe he's all he's, over he's the social that. media. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, man. Like I, I, I love making changes and everything. All the changes that we've been doing is always me. Uh, how I think would improve the show for our audience. Yes. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, as, as much work it is for all of us, uh, maybe me a little bit more, but <laughs> yeah, I, I don't. Time on your hands. I don't mind it. It's a lot of work. I don't mind it, and I I want to mm-hmm. get your guys's feedback. And you know, the main thing is that you guys need to let us know yeah. how we can cater the show for you guys. Remember, guys, like before I got into this, I didn't know anything about the community and how strong it is, and how how rampant the love for sneakers are and the people that wear them. Um, but because of you guys, I've gotten to know a lot of cool people that have reached out. So the only way that we can contact you is if you reach out. Yes. And I know you guys want to, and we're mm-hmm. awesome people, to be honest. And uh, KDC's shoes will be on the weekend. Yeah. Leave a comment, you know, yeah. positive or negative. I don't care. Yeah. I, I can take it. Um, <laughs> maybe not. I'm be nice go, to me because I can't take it sometimes. So. Cry, cry I'm, I'm the sensitive one. I'm the sensitive yeah, one. Like, sensitive. Like, I have no, a Zanga blog cute, and everything. Yeah. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> and like, as much as I seem like an asshole during these fucking recordings and everything, I'm actually fairly nice to our audience. I don't really I rag so. on. You're for the no, people, by the people. Exactly, there man. You go. I'm like the Rock. <laughs> no, let's not go that far, dude. The Rock is awesome. He changed his tattoo. Let's you, talk. You want to talk about this? I'm just. <laughs> what did he change it from and to? The 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 cow horn or the long Brahma horn? Bull. Yeah. yeah. The Brahma bull. What did he change it to? A some flower? really nice. No, it's some. It's it's a skull, but it was really nicely done. But it's not the Rock. I think it's a signification that but he's not the Rock anymore. Yeah, I know. I he's get it. Dwayne Johnson. He's always, actor. He'll always be the Rock. Comedian. He'll be the Rock. The Nation yeah. of Domination. Like, Remember that? Yeah. When you when I when you see Mark Wahlberg, what do you think? Marky Mark? Exactly. Oh, He's I, always the rock. You know what? I see him as a, a it's basketball whatever you diaries. identify with when you grow up. Yeah, that's, uh, yeah, yeah, that's true. That's, yeah, that's well, true. I know I know. Pierre respects Mark Wahlberg as a real fucking big league actor. But I, he's I, not a good actor, but he's, he's dope. He's all right, man. Have you, seen, have you seen Departed? He fucking killed. As a dick, because he's a dick. He's got that Boston swag. Boston. I right, love, I love that movie. Any bo- any person that's from Boston can be rude because yeah. they got that. Like they they got that yeah, in my sense. opinion. Yeah. But name me a a really good movie that he's done. Transform. I don't know. No way. Uh, Mark Wahlberg. Quick. Ooh. Top right. Yeah. Top three. Did Didn't we do this one before? Top three Wahlberg movies. <laughs> be that Dirk one. Diggler. What was a uh, Boogie Nights? Oh, yeah. Was he good in it, or did you he was actually like really movie? good? In well, that one. well, he was good in it, but the movie was good, yeah. um, and his dick was huge. It's crazy. Yeah, it's not real. What? Maybe. Yeah, it wasn't real. Nah. Oh man, it why did you have to ruin it for me? It wasn't real. It's you not... ruined it by telling everybody it because that was the. If you haven't seen it, you don't bother now. <laughs> On that note, <laughs> anything else you want to add before we sign off? Uh, Excited for for sneaker. Uh, sne- sne- oops, I want the ultimate sneaker yeah. show by Soul Exchange Canada. Yeah, yeah September twenty third. Um, at the Vancouver Convention Center, once again, we've been invited. And, of course, we're going to be there. Hopefully, we God, are a little bit more organized this yeah. time. This is our second year in it. so we were organized? We were perfectly it, fine. No, no, I wasn't. I was trying to sell shit. No, no right. mind. I won't be selling anything. I'll just, <laughs> I'll just be talking. 
So yeah, maybe we'll have stuff there. Maybe we'll. we'll yeah. You know, Once again, we're gonna be there uh, if everything goes according to plan. If no equipment or fucking anything failure, we'll be recording an episode there. Yeah. And of course, once again, we like to encourage any listeners that are local or going to be attending this uh, event, Soul Exchange Canada. Um, if you want tickets, I'll link everything in our social media and the podcast link as well. Yeah, cool. And if you want to buy tickets, of course, you go there and buy your tickets. Early bird's gonna be uh, um, expired soon, so get yours now. And uh, we're gonna be there. And I encourage i've been saying the same shit over and over keep interrupting myself i encourage any listener that want to get on the mic obviously if you Holler have a story to us, tell guys. let us yeah. know Seriously. and we'll set some time for you we'll work you into yeah. the show and i just want to meet as many new people as possible all the homies there already know who we are yeah. and we're all buddy buddy with them but it's always meeting new and young people and they i learn a lot from young people and you know new faces at these sneaker conventions more than i can ever do like reading shit on the internet right yeah so these are my kind of um you know um, observe us in our natural habitat we will Mm. be so unnatural though (laughs) (laughs) but either way sneaker con sorry (laughs) right it's hard it's hard (laughs) but okay Anyway, Soul Exchange Soul Canada's Soul uh, Exchange. Ultimate Sneaker Show Vancouver show will be uh, September 23rd. Um, the Sneaker Files podcast will be there. Hopefully, Joe will be there. He will. Unless <laughs> he, he gets two no flat tires. Yeah, two flat tires. He, he, yeah. Won't. he yeah. won't. He won't. No so, one's going to miss that. Yeah, man. Joe, just take the bus, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I'll drive him. Fuck. Yeah, we'll pick him up. And I won't forget um, my headphones this time. Yeah, that's you can true. forget it. We have like you six have hours to, to record. We you have lots to go all the way home again. So, shout outs. Yeah, man. Let's do the shout out. Um, our sister podcast of nice. this entire sneaker mm-hmm. podcast thing. Of course, every Sunday you can catch the Sneaker Box podcast coming out of Detroit in uh, the um, Sneaker Bar Detroit. Uh, you can catch them every Sunday live on YouTube and they syndicate their show on your on your podcast devices uh, later that week. And Shout out to Jumpman Bostic for being back on the show. So that's yes, good. Yes, Jumpman yeah. Bostic. Yeah. Made, way more active than he was a few weeks ago. So <laughs> and the rest of the guys too. Shout exactly. out to all you guys. Um, and also sh- uh, shout out to the Monday Midsole. You can catch them every Monday at 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern time on the YouTube. That's Monday Midsole on uh, YouTube at 8 o'clock uh, Eastern. Eastern and yeah. um, of course um, honorary shout out to Soul Food Sneaker Talk I, I watched their show earlier today and they mm-hmm. announced that for wh- a while today was going to be their last show really? What? Uh. yeah they're working on I don't know they were very secretive and very vague about what they're going to do it looks like they're going to do some rebranding stuff going on but uh, it's not a bad thing they're, they're trying to suggesting they're kind of suggesting that it's a good thing maybe they're rebranding the thing and come out with something new so um, come hope- listen to us while they're on a hiatus yeah. Right? So yeah. You, maybe I'll hit them up. Maybe yeah. we'll get one of them on our show and yeah. everything. So maybe that'd be awesome. Do a live thing, yeah. Yeah, man. So um, also, I don't know if I'll, I want to announce this yet or not. I'll cut it out if you guys disagree. But uh, we are planning on doing... Um, do it, dude. Just do it. Okay. Just do so it. So my lofty goal is to have one live show every month of the regular Sneaker Files podcast show. Of course, we're doing the um, Sneaker Files live every Thursday. But every th- Thursday. Yeah. But every... Tune into that one. Every last Wednesday of the month, uh, my intentions are to do a live stream of this podcast. Yes. Mm-hmm. So, of course, it's going to be on uh, Pacific time. So, it's going to be a lot later for the East Coast. But um, we usually record around 7.30 or 8 o'clock, but whatever. Um, so, if you're interested... Uh, I'll let you know closer to that date to pay attention, but it will be on a Wednesday night and it will be interactive as well. But if you don't catch it live, of course, it will be still on the regular uh, podcast. However you get this podcast right now, it will mm-hmm. still be there. So yeah. um, just a little experimentation. It doesn't hurt. It doesn't cost anything to experiment. If it doesn't work, we'll go right back to the original format. And it's not going to be a format change at all. No. It will just be something, a, a new us. delivery device yeah. for yeah. us. Yeah. You can get it live and and and, and quicker. Fuck it. That's all. If you don't like it, we might just still do it because we like it. Who knows? Wow, you're just like me. Well, we do it for them. <laughs> yeah, and we do it for ourselves. Clash like of interest shit, right here. Right? We'll wow. try it out. We'll see how it goes. Yeah. All right, man. So yeah. a few things to look out for. Um, yeah. So every Thursday, uh, catch Brookie Do on Sneaker Files Live at eight thirty p.m. Shout Eastern out to on, Do on our YouTube. And uh, yeah, man. Hopefully, we can get the technology and the and the gear all. We set. We got the personality. That's for sure. Yeah. Right, just, just missing one today, though, so. and he's Mister Personality. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in yeah, more law. ways than yeah, one. Law. So, on that note, for the Sneaker Files podcast, I'm Eugene. I'm Jason. This is Pierre. 
Happy hunting, guys.